Everyone's favorite journalist, Taylor Lorenz, is furious because over on threads, she's being censored. And that's right. For a while now, we knew that Mark Zuckerberg's threads app, which is supposed to rival Twitter slash X, was censorious. I mean, it's run by Facebook. Facebook is one of the worst. TikTok's a bit worse. But this matters because we're now getting reports that Walmart is joining the advertiser boycott. And well, we were initially thinking of launching the story with a comment from Dick Durbin, Senator, of, Senator out of Illinois, Democrat, saying that we should be enlisting illegal immigrants, non-citizens, into the army because of the shortfall. I thought, oh, look, we can't have these conversations if the platforms that allow free speech are destroyed. But this is, while bad, I think there is some good in this. Many of these people on the left, these woke reporters, cannot deny now that Mark Zuckerberg is worse for you than Twitter would have been. And if you want to be able to criticize even Elon Musk, you're going to have to use X because Zuckerberg ain't going to let you talk. So we'll talk about all of that. We got a lot more stories, of course. It's, it's, it's a bit of a wild news day. It's relatively slow, but there are a lot of stories, just nothing particularly massive. So we'll talk about uh, a lot of it, but head over to castbrew.com and buy the best cup of coffee you'll ever have. We've got Re-Rise with Roberto Jr., our limited edition blend. Appalachian Nights, of course, is everybody's favorite. We've got Rise with Roberto Jr., Stand Your Grounds. We've got Light, Medium, Dark Roast, Ground, Whole Coffee. We've also got Coffee Pods for those that want to just pop it in, make a cup of coffee very, very easily. Support our work by buying from castbrew.com. And you're also helping us launch our coffee shops, which are currently underway. The big thing we're working on right now is, I don't know what I'm allowed to say, but we're working on, uh, we want to be able to get as many of these around the country. So that requires forming new companies. All of that paperwork is going through. Contract negotiations, working with Chef Andrew Gruel. If you want to support that effort, castbrew.com. But also don't forget to head over to timcast.com. Click join us so you can hang out in the members only uncensored show coming up at 10 p.m. tonight after the main show where you as members can actually submit questions and call in to talk to us and our guest. And of course, that means you'll be members of our exclusive Discord server where you can hang out with like-minded individuals. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Joining us tonight to talk about this and so much more is Kingsley Wilson. That is correct. Thanks for having me, Tim. Um, as you said, I'm Kingsley Wilson. I am a Trump campaign alum, and I currently do digital media uh, for the Center for Renewing America in D.C. I'm also national committee woman for the D.C. Young Republicans. So thanks for having me. And uh, so Wilson's new. It is new. Yes, I recently got married about a month ago. So, you know, I've been joking no longer Cortez. I guess I'm white now. So I know that privilege you all enjoy. <laughs> there you go. Now now people are just going to go ahead and yeah, you lose your uh, your 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 race card. I got exactly. her sunscreen as a wedding present. <laughs> oh, I there we go. Uh, I'm Hannah Claire Brimo. I was really grateful to be with the DCYRs at their Christmas party last weekend. It was a fun time. I am, of course, a writer for SCNR.com. Uh, it's the best, also known as Scanner News. Tim's laughing at me. Is What's a true? YR? A young Republican. Ah, yes. See, I, some other people use letters too, not just here at Scanner, scnr .com. Um, I can't have a good intro because I'm now distracted, but Ian's here. My intro is going to be even better. Yeah, it always is. Hi, though. it's Ian Crossland. Good to be here. Hi, everyone. Good to <laughs> see you, Kingsley. Good to see you. What's happening, Serge? Uh, not much. Hey, Kingsley, good to see you again, too. Uh, let's just get into the show, Tim, whenever you're ready. Here we go. We got a culture war start for all of you. ALX on Twitter says... Taylor Renz says she's being shadow banned on threads and then a laughing, crying emoji. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar, Taylor Lorenz is a very prominent mainstream media reporter. She's worked for a bunch of uh, very large publications, very critical of Elon Musk, very left leaning. Now, she, like many other woke reporters, left Twitter complaining that Elon Musk was going to make it riddled with hate speech or whatever. But now she has these threads up on threads of all uh, places complaining that she is being censored. Let me just tell you, we're going over, uh, you know, our content product, you know, uh, production and everything and what we want to do. And we want to do sketches and jokes. We're working on the skateboarding show. And uh, I'm like, you know, we can put whatever we want on X. We can go on X. We can make any joke we want, no matter how vulgar or whatever. And Rumble too. But Facebook will get banned. TikTok will get banned. Instagram will get banned. That's obvious to anyone with a brain. So all of these woke journalists that thought they were going to rush over to threads and are now complaining about it. Surprise, surprise. She posted. I posted the cover of yesterday's New York Post to threads talking about how hypothetical. I'm sorry, how, how hypocritical the New York Post is in their criticism of Meta when they published the same four Thinspo images. They're bashing metaphor. I don't know what she's referring to. What did threads do? Locked me out of my Instagram account until I deleted the thread and sent this message to my threads account saying they're going to shadow ban me. 
absolutely insane levels of censorship where we can't even discuss the media's coverage of Meta on Meta's own apps. Well, on Twitter, you can talk about whatever you want. How are we supposed to critique media or cover the media when Meta essentially bans all discussions on, of certain uh, stories and topics? It's terrible for free expression, and I wish more people in the media held Meta to account for their dangerously blunt moderation tactics. What I absolutely love about this is that this, is, this tweet could have been from six years ago on Twitter from someone on the right, and now it's coming from a woke reporter who is on Mark Zuckerberg's threads, and she did not have to leave Twitter. Like, things have gotten so much better. So let me just say, this is, I mean, I guess it's schadenfreude. That's kind of funny. That's why Alex is posting the laughing emoji to see Taylor Lorenz be like, oh, no, I'm being censored. It's like, well, that kind of proves our point, right? Others are probably just gloating in her being censored. But uh, I think it's a good sign. And I think it shows you how important it was that Elon Musk took the actions that he did. It proves him right. It kind of reminds me of the reverse of when people who are liberal and live in big cities move to small towns and then want to change it like she was somewhere that had free speech left it and now it's like but why is there no free speech this is crazy i mean i don't think zuckerberg promised anyone anything other than to sell all your data to china and that's my personal opinion i think i i think uh well i'll just go as conspiratorial as possible i think threads is probably uh intelligent u.s intelligence agencies uh, it's just feds I, I don't, totally uh, forgot it existed. But to your point, this always like cracks me up, I guess, like ALX, because I love when like this sort of thing happens to leftists, right? Because it's the monster that they created coming for them. They were totally fine with the revolution until they became the target. Taylor Renz, I think the t Twitter files showed, reported more accounts than practically any other user on the platform. She was a champion for the censorship cause. And now it's it's coming for her. And I, I think it's hilarious to watch. It's also I mean, this phenomenon where people will go from system to system to system and they'll see the same problem in every system, but they'll go like, this system's broken. Some, who's, who's in charge of this system? Fix it. They go to the next one. This system's broken. Who's in charge of this? Fix it. But what they don't see is the pattern. Yeah. It would have been interesting if she had been like, as an experiment, I posted this thing to see how Meta would respond to it and they have censored me and therefore Meta doesn't like whatever. But instead it's like, I am the victim. This system is not helping me the way I think it should. It's not obeying my desires, even though it never agreed to give me these things in, in the first place. It's only worse. Instagram's way worse. And it, it, the funny thing is when conservatives and libertarians came out and said, yeah, like, yeah, threads is way worse. We all tried it. The leftist media organizations came out and, and accused all of us of being conspiracy theorists and lying and making these stories up. And now they're they're reaping what they've sown. They all jumped onto this. I mean, look, X, Twitter, whatever, is this massive shit. And there's concerns about whether or not there's going to be enough fuel for it because all these advertisers are pulling out. Fine. But Mark Zuckerberg pulls up on this dinghy and he's like, everybody up, all everybody hop on board. And they're all like, yeah. And they all jump onto this little dinghy that Mark Zuckerberg's driving around in. And it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And now, and, and this is what we get. So I don't know. I guess people can revel in schadenfreude or whatever. But uh, going back to what I was saying, I think it's deep state. I think uh, we can say a few things that are absolutely fair. One, it is not a conspiracy. It's actually a fact. It is historical record. U.S. intelligence agencies were in direct communication with all of the big tech companies running social media to manipulate and control speech. There, this was directly related to the Hunter Biden laptop interfering with elections. That's how extreme it was. I was personally targeted by the government and uh, uh, leftist uh, uh, tactics with the, um, what is it? What was it the EIC? Was it, or is it EIP? Uh, election? It was EIP, right? Election Integrity Partnership or something, where they tried getting people banned and taking things down. And they did successfully do this. Government colluding with um, researchers. They call them researchers. This is how they can launder government censorship. We know for a fact they're doing it. Okay, then Elon Musk says he's going to buy X and he's and he's going to, you know, there's talk of restoring all these accounts, bringing people back and uh oh, deep state's going to get exposed. Intelligence agencies did get exposed at the exact same time. This is going down. Mark Zuckerberg announces threads. Simple solution is that Zuckerberg said, hey, I got a great opportunity to make a, co a competitor right now to Twitter and all these people who are mad Elon's buying it. We can give them space. He that's created the, a Canada equivalent. Yeah, and, and that's and that's a simple explanation. And now I'll give you the simple conspiratorial explanation, which I believe is extremely likely to be true. Upon announcing this, the CIA, the FBI, uh, Biden administration contacted Mark Zuckerberg because they were already in direct communication and said, we definitely want to be able to access threads in the same way as everything else. 
And Zuck probably said, don't worry, it'll function the same as other platforms. You will have access. And that's where we are now. There's the the bolder, more uh, less likely conspir- conspiracy in that the deep state directly went to Zuckerberg and said, you got to do something about this. You need to make some kind of competitor. Can you do it? I would not be surprised, to be honest, to find out that someone in government went to Zuckerberg and suggested it. Not that they demanded it or mandated it, but I wouldn't be surprised if some emails got released through a FOIA request or something where it shows someone in the Biden White House said, hey, Mark, are you able to make something? Because, you know, this Twitter stuff is bad. And then Zuckerberg said yes. I think it's arrogance on Zuckerberg's part, though, to think that his uh, technology and what he would build would be able to compete with Twitter slash X or whatever it was called at the time. I mean, people are really devoted to Twitter as a platform. It was revolutionary in what it was creating. And I think that original medium, we've seen other people. I mean, there's Truth Social. There are a couple other competitors out there that just haven't been able to achieve it. And so to think, oh, well, because it's already connected to your Instagram account, therefore somehow that will convert people, I think just shows how out of touch or how under how much he underestimated uh, X and Elon's ability to retain it's loyal like, supporters. It's like Google Plus, remember that? For like a second, but I forgot what it was and they had Hangouts, was that a thing? Yeah, yeah. Hangouts. Hangouts were actually pretty big for a while. They were? And it's Yeah, Google Plus wasn't, but Hangouts were because it was the easiest way to do a, a web-based live chat with multiple people. Oh. Now it's all Zoom or whatever. Mm-hmm. But if Google made Hangouts and, and, and kept pushing that, people wouldn't be doing Zoom meetings. They'd be doing Hangouts. Yeah. Because that, that, that's what a lot of people were doing. But they just had to get that pandemic earlier. If only. If only. <laughs> you know, the thing about Google is they just don't understand how to be cool. So what happens is everyone's pissed at Facebook. So Google Plus announces, you know, we're making a social platform and everybody wanted it. But they said, no, 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 no. Limited users only. Send out a bunch of invites. Tons of people signed up. I actually had, what did I have? I had like. 500,000 followers on Google Plus. It, yeah, weird. weird, weird. They yeah. totally I, mis, mismanaged YouTube. They should have made YouTube the social network. Calling it Google well, Plus and Google Hangout and Google this that, and that. And, like, and they tried doing that. You had YouTube. They, they tried doing that and it was killing YouTube. So anyway, what they should have done at this point with Google Plus was as soon as the demand was at maximum capacity and everybody wanted an invite, they should have said, I'm sorry, everyone. It's an exclusive platform only. And then two hours later said, you know what? We're opening it up, baby. And then they would have they would have won instantly. Mm-hmm. They did the same thing with Google Glass. They they launched something. Everybody wants it. And then they say, nah, you can't have it. And then eventually some woke journalist goes, well, I didn't want it anyway. You're a glass hole. And then all of a sudden, nobody wants to buy Google Glass anymore. It went from the coolest thing everybody wanted to just total garbage. Yeah, I, I had some faith when Google bought YouTube that it would be, I mean, they, they were able to start funding it with the partner program, which is pretty cool. But like Larry and Sergey are like uber nerds, you know, the, so the company's kind of like uber nerdy. It's just the way it was built. The ethos there, of it. I like them, but they were nerdy. There was a period, I think it was, um, let's see, what year would it have been? Maybe like 2013 or 14. I'm not sure. No, it was probably way earlier than that. Google was trying to integrate YouTube and Google+. Plus. They, they wanted have. they wanted Google YouTube to turn into Google Plus, and when they started integrating it, people started fleeing and complaining like crazy, and so then they backed it off. It was like they had it. three stops: you could either go to Google Plus, you could go to your Google Hangout, which was connected to your Google phone number, or was it to your other Google account? I had three of them, you know, three different emails attached to three mm-hmm. different accounts, and I couldn't get them to consolidate. It was such a mess. I can understand why these platforms want to grow and become more things they have to compete. I mean, the same ways that Instagram added Reels, the, the short form video to directly compete with TikTok, that makes sense to me. They're more similar. But I don't understand, and maybe it's because, and I don't know if anyone in this room can answer it, I don't understand the point of threads. I've never opened it, and I'm not sure how it differentiates from the YouTube like community tab. Don't threads? You have, isn't that what... Threads Inst- is like Twitter. Yeah, yeah threads, 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 threads is, is like Twitter, but then YouTube has the community tab, right? Like, yeah. isn't that where people can message if they're like really into a creator or whatever? Like, no, that's that's it, that's kind of like a Twitter feed for your YouTube, but it's basically linked to your YouTube, so it's used to, uh, for the most part, hey guys, heads just up. like announcements. Yeah. See, I I feel like it would make more sense to me to have an integrated competitor to X on YouTube because people are already alive and well in the comment sections there. I, to I, make a competitor on Instagram seems weird to me. I just open Threads, and the first thing I see, I've got. Um, Let's see, Michaela Peterson, and then uh, Charlie Kirk. And there's two replies to Charlie Kirk's post. <laughs> it's bumping yeah, the over there. Three likes. Terrible. 
I don't know, Charlie. Charlie, why are you using threads? You should make a threads right now, Kingsley. And I bet you could be the most dominant person by the end of the episode. <laughs> there we go. Oh, okay. I think Michaela Michaela Peterson's responding to a bunch of people criticizing her dad. It's exhilarating. Yeah. Because Matt all Reif the lefties went on... there, though, it's just like a cesspool of like, it's an echo chamber mm -hmm. in many ways. And I feel like the fun parts about Twitter, about YouTube are like fighting in the comments and yeah. like seeing people dunk on other people. Like, that's why I love Twitter. I think that's why a lot of people love Twitter. Wow. So when you take that away, you just lose the yeah. user experience. Unless they start infighting, which could be interesting. Maybe, right. yeah. Who checked threads during the outbreak of the Hamas-Israel conflict? Because maybe it was like alive and well then. Oh, I forgot to check my threads. That's why. Because that, that's when I think a lot of the left was up in arms. Not that that it wasn't true on the right, but it was a particularly challenging times for like the most progressive angle of the party versus mm -hmm. the more moderate side. Uh, they were fighting a lot. I wonder if threads allowed any kind of discontent. I don't trust you know proprietary software in general, but I really don't trust public companies when they do social networks. Like X is private still at this. I'm pretty sure X is still yeah. private mm -hmm. and uh, Mines is private. The, you have Rumble. Well, Rumble just went public, but that's like road to co-op. I want to, I want to, I, I, we got something interesting here. I'm, I'm going to pull up this story real quick. This is from Mashable. Walmart joins the X Twitter ad boycott. This one will sting. The big box store joins Apple, Disney, and others in ditching X over Elon Musk's comments. Uh, this is uh, by Matt Bender, and he's he's wrong. I think he's lying. I mean, it, it's it, it's hard to say. They like to say Donald Trump lied, and I always ask, well, is he wrong or is he lying? There's a difference, right? I think Matt's lying because I'm willing to bet in this. There, uh, yeah, here it is. Here it is. Just in time for the holiday shopping season, Walmart decided to stop advertising on Elon Musk's X, joining a slew of other major companies that have fled the social media platform in recent weeks. Second paragraph, quote, we aren't advertising on X as we found other platforms to better reach our customers. A Walmart spokesperson told Reuters, which first reported on the retail claim chain's decision to suspend an ad, ad campaigns on the website. Walmart's decision to stop advertising comes after Musk said, go after yourself, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, the issue is the greater quote from Walmart was something, let me, let me pull up Reuters, because I got Mashable here on purpose. Uh, Walmart says it's not advertising on social platform X, right. But the actual uh, quote they say is, has nothing to do with any of this. I'm pretty sure they said we stopped advertising in, in October. No, this is, this is kind of crazy to see. A lot of news outlets are reporting this. I think there is a potential that Walmart is trying to not be involved and, and, and you know, lower their amount of ad spending. But the, 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 the original story reporting this, Walmart said they slowed down their ad spends back in October. It has nothing to do with what Elon said. Now it's being reported by these organizations that it's, that it's you know, Walmart joining the ad boycott. Now, either way, a lot of money is being lost by X. And one of the interesting things, actually, I, re I just pulled up threads for the previous segment. And one of the first things that is suggested to me, I don't follow Hank Green, but it's Hank Green. He said numbers for the curious. In the last 30, 30 days, TikTok views, 37 million. TikTok rev share, $3,600. Uh, RPM is 10 cents. YouTube shorts views, $41 million. YouTube shorts rev, 4,400. Oh, 41 million views. 41 million views. You said yeah. dollars. Oh, oh <laughs> no, no, yeah, sorry, sorry. 41 million views, $4,400. Reels views, uh, doesn't report, minimum is 13 million. His uh, share was $988 for a seven cent RPM. That's interesting in how uh, you make literally no money, no money on these platforms for all of these views. It, it, that's kind of crazy that on TikTok, you get 37 million views, you get, wow, you're getting $3,600. You have to be one of the most famous people to make a living. Hank Green, is one of like the biggest social media influencers and he's only making 3,600 a month off TikTok. Okay, combine them all and he's gonna be making what, like 150K a year? Being the, one of the most famous personalities? There's almost no point in doing any of those posts. It's all just being whittled down. Mm -hmm. The crazy thing is when you look at X and the ad boycott, I'm wondering how this will impact how much money people are, all, like, are already getting because the rates there are super low too. I get like 200 million impressions on my on my profile i get about 5500 per month from the from the ad share deal hmm. now it's probably gonna go to nothing because of what's going on yeah as more mm -hmm. people become influencers too like every human pretty much as a camera and can as their side job make a video about what they do with their main job at the very least that 
the ad revenue. I don't think ad revenue models are the way to go. I think it's sub super chats and direct subscriptions. Plus then the, the advertiser can't pull the rug on your entire business model. Do you think that this data will become public enough to deter Gen Z? Like this is what Gen Z wants to do with their lives. Most of them want to be an influencer or they talk about wanting to be, you know, a social media personality. This is regularly something they report. If is this sort of like when everyone wants to be an actor and then at a certain point, I mean, I'm sure you experience this too, people are like, but are you actually going to support yourself doing that? Only a couple people make it big. Like, at what point do people realize this idea that social media is the only way, like this influencer pathway, is it going to become less romantic for the youngest generation? Uh, hopefully soon, because like if you make internet videos, but you do nothing with your life, they're not going to be very interesting videos. But if you're a mechanic and you make in internet videos and you rope in the mechanics into that, it becomes very interesting. So they're synergistic. You don't want to like everyone, in my opinion, should have the opportunity to become an internet video star and, and you should highlight the cool things there, you do in your life. You could you could make a YouTube channel where you personally put things in boxes, wrap those boxes and then call it unboxing presence channel. And you literally just film yourself slowly unwrapping a box. I'm, 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 I'm not Tim's even joking. Tim's alternate career, people ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. No, people love they this love stuff. Them. Yeah. So you've got viral videos of people opening like Pokemon cards. It doesn't matter. People just want to see what's inside. It's the weirdest thing. So you don't need to be interesting at all. You just need to make content and then hypnotize people. You know what I really love? I love the uh, like the hydraulic press channel. Yeah, me too. I watch a lot of them. <laughs> now there's like twelve of them. Mm -hmm. Then there's the uh, 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 the red hot nickel ball. Yep, yeah, get a where lot they of take those. A, yeah, there's like now there's like twelve of them. And uh, I have a, I have a really good idea idea that I wanted to do, but you know it's very dangerous. I want to electrocute things. I'm like you know how many volts and amps or whatever until a teddy bear bursts in a flame. That's but you cool. know there's someone else who'd be like, yeah, I do want to click on that video. I want to know how many volts it takes. Right. I know, and you know my idea was, what you do it live. And then every viewer like increases the voltage by a certain number. Especially when water's involved, like watching electricity go through water is fascinating. See, there you go. But that's the and question. And then you get like 20,000 people watching and then like the energy levels, you know, going up. That'd be fun, right? Yeah. I think there's a lot of things. It's not that I'm against people making stuff, obviously, and putting it on the internet. I've, I, I'm for it. I just want that to be clear. It's just at a certain point, does it pay out the way people think it's going to? And is this a long-term sustainable career? Because I think that's why you need the influencer ecosystem between all of the platforms. Not one platform really generates enough revenue for a medium-sized person to sustain themselves is what it sounds like to me. And I don't know. Yeah, definitely not to sustain. But like Ian was saying earlier, like it could be a side hustle. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people have multiple jobs these days anyway, Biden economy. Um, so, you know, just filming your job day to day, I think people can put that kind of content out there and it's pretty easy. Yeah. How many people how many people have tried doing that? I'm going to drive an Uber and film it and put the videos of conversations on the Internet. I've heard that idea 8000 times and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah get in line. <laughs> yeah, Does it's Uber like, let you do that? They do record. Some cars do record whatever's happening, right? I'm yeah. pretty sure they do. You just got to tell people hmm. it's like, hey, like when they get in your car and be like, hey, do you mind if I film? And then put the thing on my YouTube channel, and some if someone says no, but okay, and then you don't. Mm -hmm. But Uber is a bad job anyway. I feel bad for Uber drivers. You cannot make a living doing that. It mm -hmm. destroys your car. No, it costs not more no. to drive your yeah, car. Yeah, when I get a ride from the airport to here, and it's a hundred bucks, I'm like, what is that? Like sixty forty of it goes to the driver. Yeah, what it's is crazy? And that's all. That's that's going to cover gas and the wear on the car. Yeah. And they just spent two and a half hours driving me. Like what in the heck? Yeah, I was reading like in New York that. Uh, Uber doesn't pay enough to cover the cost of the wear and tear on the car and gas, but people don't realize wear and tear. So they're like, all right, yeah, it made 60 bucks. And it's like, by the end of the month, that money, you're going to be negative because your car is going to break and then you have no job. I wish we saw taxis. I miss taxis. Those are great. They still exist, you know, but good luck. Yeah. They, they've been protesting quite a bit because mm -hmm. they got screwed over by New York. But, but anyway, man, social media is a wild thing. And I'm kind of feeling like, if we do move into this AI automated future where all work is, is just being taken. My nightmare. Yeah, just cars drive themselves. I'm seeing more videos pop up on Instagram of just, you know, like we've automated this job and that job and you've got all the self-driving cars now. The only job you're going to have is competing with each other to get eyeballs and then humans are going to become more insane than they already are. Because mm -hmm. already if we're looking at you need 37 million views to make three grand. Imagine the psychotic behaviors people will adopt to to try and make this work. Yeah. They're going to they're going to 
I don't know, develop uh, very serious personality disorders. But that's got to be bad. For the it's got to be bad. Human Literally, race. is they, bad. Do yes, they develop them, or do the people who are prone to those personality disorders to draw, do they want to be online doing these things? Is it all sort of like a natural? It's a like moss with flame. Both. Yeah, I think this I is what think. wokeness comes from. Mm -hmm. People are online and they're trying to find ways to hit the algorithm, mm -hmm. and the algorithms are leading lemmings off a cliff. But what that makes me think is like the market tends to adjust and adopt for what is good and what makes sense for the society. I think in general, maybe not, maybe it just leads towards whatever's most <clears throat> addictive. But if the thing is bringing no value, but adding psychosis to the system, I would imagine that the market would weed it out. Why? What if we can't tell it's psychosis because we're so used to it because we consume so much of this content that we can't tell the difference between what's normal and what's not anymore. That's a good point. We're there. Ugh, we're absolutely the there. So if every everybody believes something because everyone's sharing it, I mean, we can see the beginnings of this with the Covington Catholic kids. Everybody sees the video, they assume it's true. Mm -hmm. They just said, this kid got in that guy's face. And then, uh-oh, yeah. a two-hour live stream was uncovered showing, actually, it was the other way around. Well, I was just looking up the uh, what you said, like, that Walmart had pulled the ads in October and I found it, but I had to dig deep into Google because even though that was how they initially reported X, uh, the Joe Baranach, I can't say his name, head of operations at X said that Walmart started pulling its advertising. It hasn't advertised since October. So right. the narrative that is being spun to the top of Google is actually different from the way it was originally reported. They decided what was coming out. So They're shifting reality. And could, I think it, that's been the best part of X, honestly. Like as a user, we can fact check these people in real time now. Journalists have just been able to push their narratives for decades and we haven't been able to, you know, dig and actually find it for ourselves. A lot of people don't have the time or the mm -hmm. willingness to do that. So X slapping a community note on something like this, I think is super beneficial. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple ways to look at it. It could be that Walmart was the first to boycott and no one reported it. So if they're, they're reporting trendsetters, Walmart. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if they're saying Walmart has just joined. No, 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 because they stopped advertising a long time ago or it's completely unrelated. But I'll tell you what, 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 what proves that it's all fake. I'll, I'm going to prove to you right now. You live in a fake world, likely just being perpetuated by the deep state because money is fake. Fiat currencies. Here's a story from India. Who is it? Indian Express. There you go. The Indian Express, a bastion of journalism, says X slash Twitter has higher organic traffic, but lower ad revenue than Facebook and Instagram. Elon Musk. He posted this. And you can see Twitter's S, uh, uh, SE traffic, 650.9 million. Paid traffic is 1.1 thousand, almost none. Paid traffic price, 14.3K. You can look at Instagram. They have 100,000 in paid traffic and Facebook has 708,000 in paid traffic with even less views. So not only does Twitter have way more traffic, way less of it is paid traffic. So this means with advertisers pulling off of X or to give credit to the leftists who are saying Walmart's jumping ship, Walmart saying we're doing better on other platforms. I don't buy it. I don't believe they are. I've also done advertising on these other platforms and I believe that most of it is fake. A bot will watch your ad and then they'll say, well, we assume it's real because how are they supposed to know? Mm -hmm. I knew these dudes who were starting a company that's that's their whole job. Uh, the whole company premise was to to you. you They would operate in between the company and the social media platform. So company would say we want to do an ad. Then social media company would say, OK, they would go in the middle and track all of the link clicks to see how many were fake and how many were not. And I think they were telling me like around half or more is fake. Half. So that means when you spend 10 bucks, you think you're getting a certain amount of views, you're getting half that. Mm -hmm. It's all fake. So now we know that Twitter is the best. Why aren't they, why isn't anybody spending money there? Why spend money on Facebook when we all know Facebook isn't giving you the same return? Because Elon Musk bad, Tim. We can't right. be anywhere near him, him and that orange guy. Yep. I think the, the targeted ads are enticing with Facebook. You, they track people so well. You can be like, I'm looking for 27-year-old males that wear red hats that live near Philadelphia that are awake between the hours of 4 and 9 p.m. And like, I don't know if Twitter can can offer that kind of targeted ad revenue. I mean, even if half of them are bots, that's still really, really good targeting. Let's, let's, like that. But it actually means that the price is twice as high because you're getting half as many views. It's really. more than twice. Uh, oh, you mean to, to advertise to targeted audiences is like eight bucks for a thousand views, whereas untargeted is like a dollar fifty for a thousand views. But I, is that what your question was? No, what I'm saying is like if I were to spend whatever amount of money because I think that's going to get me a thousand views, but actually it's getting me 500. 
the price per view is much higher than their advertising. But they're reporting to you it's a thousand views. Exactly. And they're just not telling you that yeah. the other half are fake. Let's jump to this story. We got this tweet from AI not kill everyone ism memes. Okay. Oh. And they, they are uh, playing a video from Sam Altman who says he fears the impact that AI is going to have on the election. And it's not deep fakes. He makes a really great point. He says, the main worry I have is not one that gets airtime. On the issue of deep fakes, he says, we all, you know, talking about deep fakes is fighting the last war. We, we all have some degree of immunity to this. We know that when there's a video or a photo or audio, we, we should check and make sure it could be fake. And then he's asked, well, then what do you mean? And he says, the thing I'm really worried about is customized one-on-one -on -one persuasion ability. A foreign adversary that has trained their own AI system that none of us even know about. Like systems on the internet powered by AI that are just like subtly influencing you. The interviewer says, I fear manipulation by AI ease my concerns. I, I just want to, you know, I bring this up because guys, we're, 2024 is around the corner. We are, uh, we're going to be off for the last week of this month. So there's only a couple weeks left. We're going to be doing shows and talking about this stuff. But 2024 is, is, is just about here. And this is already happening. 100% already starting in probably 2015 and getting crazier. Actually, I think it's fair to say with the advent of social media, this degree of manipulation has existed and it's been getting crazier and crazier. And as of right now, I'm willing to bet you are already being manipulated by AI. Now, of course, I know the immediate reaction from everybody is that's not what AI means, Tim. You're talking about algorithms. And it's like, okay, dude, no, we're speaking generally that computers are automated to the point where they're manipulating information in a variety of ways to sell products or to get people to win elections. And I say AI because it's probably already outside the control of human beings. So when you go on Twitter, when you go on Facebook, Instagram or whatever, you don't realize this. But yeah, they are probably you are probably being influenced by this machine that has no end goal, no real intention. Here's the scary thing. A human being has a goal. I want this person to be president for this reason. An AI has, I want this person to stare at the screen for 10 seconds longer. Mm -hmm. And that, and they, it will throw whatever in front of your face to make that happen. Now, of course, people are going to say that's an algorithm. Sure, fine. If you're talking about artificial general intelligence, then the real fear is the AGI will make you serve it as a, a demigod master and you won't even realize that you live for the machine. But, you know, in the general sense, we are all already being manipulated for the 2024 election that's happening now. Yeah, I've, I think you're right. I've stopped, not completely, but I've kind of stopped taking negative comments seriously, even remotely, if I don't know who they're from. I even tell myself sometimes it's probably an AI. And I know it's not probably an AI, but the, it's possibly an AI, and I'm just not going to taint my mind with that crap. You're breaking out of the matrix. Yeah, but the positive like comments I still take seriously. Well, what if those are AI? <laughs> but I they mean, might be. The thing, you could dead internet know. theory, dude. You know dead internet theory? I know uh, that what 80% of the people on the internet are, are fake. Are fake. Mm -hmm. And you go and you're talking to a computer. Dude, mm -hmm. you're standing in front of you. I got 1.8 million followers, almost 1.9 million followers. And so when I tweet, what people think is that there is a million, two million people all standing there like with their phones up recording when in reality, maybe it's a hundred thousand. Who knows? They do. They have these apps where you can like check how many files are organic. And whenever I do it, it's like, oh, they're all real or whatever. I don't buy it. I think the whole thing is fake. I tweet something out. I get a bunch of generic random anime squirrels or whatever. And I'm just like, I wonder if fake. AI that Sam Altman's talking about is like, all it's trying to do is confuse you. So whatever you make a video, you make a video about, I walked in, the sky was beautiful today. You get a comment of, no, it was really nasty out. Or you say, I really like this candidate for president. Well, that candidate's really nasty. Don't you see? And I, then I assume the AI wants you to continue to interact with it. That's what its ultimate goal is because it needs your input to have data to continue to make decisions about what to do next. I mean, I have a very rudimentary understanding of AI, but that, that's what it seems like it needs. It needs human interaction to continue to basically use us to figure out what mm -hmm. you like to do and to, to potentially behavioral model or whatever. And so I what I find interesting is that we have been letting ourselves be susceptible to wanting to interact with the AI for a long time. I mean, this is what we talk about with young teenagers who are essentially addicted to social media because they see all their value in the number of likes, the number of engagements, how long their snap streak is, all of these metrics to say, 
open the, open your phone right now. You have a notification. You have a click. You want to respond. You don't want to be the one who doesn't respond to the Snapchat story. You have to have something up. Actually, if your Instagram page, you know, if you interact with it enough, it gives you more. It's more likely to show yourself. Like it's always driving you back to using it all the time, which is also what the AI wants you to do. The AI wants to continue to learn what you're doing, so it needs you to constantly come back to it. Right. And oh. he mentioned specifically, you know, foreign adversaries. I think it's important for us to realize that this isn't just China, like it's our own government. To what extent are, you know, agencies like the FBI and the NSA mm -hmm. using AI uh -huh. to influence American citizens when they go to vote at the polls in 2024? I mean, I think that needs to be a real concern because you look at an agency like the FBI who has a long history of entrapping Americans and pushing them and incentivizing them to do certain things. I think, you know, we can't put it past these guys to be using this to reach their own ends. And private companies, for sure. Uh, like reading about the business plot, the Smedley Butler plot, 1933, these bankers tried to get Smedley Butler to overthrow the U.S. government and install a fascist dictatorship. Is Smedley Butler was like the top general on, on, in the United States. They really wanted to overthrow March 500,000 dudes on Washington. This is like a real plot. Why did they want to do it? Because federal FDR took us off the gold res the gold standard, and they were like, he's going to destroy the economy. We have to take him out of office and put a put a general in and, and become fascist like Mussolini. It was so crazy that they like, and they're just totally willing, like the federal reserve informa formation on the, the Jekyll Island. These guys have like the, the, the private sector. When we talk about foreign agents that the private sector are foreign agents, corporations are foreign agents to our government. They're not part of our government. They might exist on in the United States, but they are foreign agents. So they might also very well be the ones trying to manipulate us. Well, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, we know for a fact it is the government manipulating us along with the massive corporations. So, you know, welcome. Welcome to the nightmare. Welcome to hell, baby. It's going to be. It, 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 look, we talked about this last week. I posted a deep fake of Nancy Pelosi a, a year and a half ago, and it looked hilariously bad and disgusting. You post a deep fake of Nancy Pelosi now, and it's hilarious and realistic. Where are we going to be with AI voice uh, deep faking? It's going to be perfect. So we're, we're, we're going into 2024. Deep fakes are bad. But the, the real issue is that there's probably already right now with GPT being public, there are probably millions of AI chatbot accounts on social media that are programmed just to respond in certain ways, but slightly unique. It used to be that if you searched for a certain phrase, you'd see like 10,000 accounts all tweeting the same exact quote and you knew it was a bot farm or something. But now they're going to use these these large language models to generate semi-unique but similar responses. They're going to program into it. Whenever you see anything about the with these subject matter, respond with a quote that has these parameters. And now someone's going to get bombarded by a bunch of cartoon squirrels, communist squirrels on Twitter, and they're going to believe it's real life. And then they're going to be like, I, I need to, it, I need, I need to behave like this it, because it's it could normal. be like if music is played in video, put fire emoji in chat. If user of video says positive things about concept, we want them to talk about positively. If they say negative things in chat, if negative words are used, give thumbs down emoji when music plays. Like crazy it's worse manipulative. Than, it's crazy than that. I mean, that's so rudimentary. You're gonna get three. You're gonna get someone. They're gonna. You're, you're gonna tweet something like, I think that we need to be back on the gold standard. Ron Paul was right. And the AI will generate a response that is five five tweets long, numbered, and it's going to be like, Ian, you're wrong about this. Here's why. And you're going to see a picture of a guy, and you're going to be like, well, that's probably a real person. And in reality, it's just one of the faceless husks of the of the narrative machine being programmed just to, to convince you that you're wrong. And they interact with each other. You'll see conversations in the comments, and those could all be AI trying to... Could all be fake. Could all be not real. It's possible that we're not even in this room right now. <laughs> that everyone watching at home is all well, eight, all CGI. That's where I'm starting to be like, just have have kids and like spend time with your children because that's not going to get deep faked out of you. Like, and maybe maybe people will be tricked into thinking their family is not their family or vice versa. I want to start but, asking regular people that I meet, do they have accounts on on X or Instagram or TikTok or whatever? So many people I know are not on on X. Like it, it's it's hard to be in the media space without being on it. And so I think that we have a warped perspective. I think most people I know are not on like my just friends that I have made throughout my life are not on it at all. And so right. there's stuff that blows up online that we know about. We think, oh, this happened and that will influence election. But actually, like there's a lot of people who don't know about this this thing that trended for a week. It's like a separate universe. Well, one of the stories that we'll, we'll get into later is Bill Maher saying, when Roseanne says you're MK Ultra, he goes, "Who's that?" <laughs> he was played so ignorant in that interview 
with Roseanne. She brought up Klaus Schwab, and he was like, "Who's Klaus Schwab?" I'm right. Like, really? But but no no no. Really? This is a guy who lives on CNN. Yeah. yeah. That's Bill Maher's thing. It's like he grew up watching MSNBC, and that is what his worldview is. That's it. It's so funny though because leftists and progressives look to him as an intellectual. Like how ironic no, is not that? Anymore. that Really? I no, feel the like left, they do. The, the left hates Bill Maher. The coastal elites, though, I feel like some of them... Yeah, but those like, are liberals. Yeah. Leftists think okay, Bill so Maher's... Okay, so classical liberals look to him well, classical, as intellectual classical liberals are like, right-wing. Okay. So classical, not all the time. Classical liberal it's like a means, crazy riddle. <laughs> no, well, so classical, <laughs> not all the time. classical liberal refers to right-wing, like, right libertarians. Right. Traditional liberal would refer to, like, Democrats from 15 years ago. And so that's Bill Maher. Leftists think he's right wing and they call him a fascist and they call him alt right and they've called him alt right for like eight years. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. weird how much the left just dragged themselves over and said, no, the moderates are actually far right. They're crazy. Don't listen to them. Like they have just completely moved the map. Or like if you ever see one of those videos of someone moving a house across a field, like and we all were just like, okay, sounds good. And now the skew of what's right and what's far right and what's left is so off i feel like we need to just recalibrate it to where I, most of america actually is i'm wondering someone super chatted as a joke this super chat isn't real but serious serious question have you guys in the chat asked yourselves how many of the people posting are probably not even real and how many of the super chats aren't even real i'm not even joking. cutting the value of our show you'll see it, not the value. Listening to us. every once in a while you'll see a comment in the live chat and then an immediately the, the same comment from a different account same like same capitalization everything it'll just be two sentences identical and the other thing, too, is if there is an influence operation, you might be a regular person in the regular chat and you're posting your opinions and you can't compete with a foreign entity or corporation that is paying for the super chats to make sure their views are more prominently displayed above yours. And speaking of not being able to compete with AI, man, in, in day trading, you know, you try and do day trading oh, with crypto you can't. or anything, you can't compete with the AI. It, you might make a little bit along with it, but that stuff is driving the market. The crazy stuff is like the crypto arbitrage. Where like people make millions of dollars a year doing literally nothing, just by like making a cent on a trade. A yeah, I don't, trade. I don't, I don't know exactly how it how it works. But oh, so, so, that's where they'll get it on one market and then immediately yeah. sell it on another market where it's, it's slightly I mean, different sort of price. When a when a when a, tr when a transfer is executed, the computer can move in and make a deal faster than the human can. So when a human's making a deal, it's going through the system, and the computer just instantly jumps in between and then gets a fraction of a penny from that trade. And then you do that millions upon millions of times and you are just shaving off fractions of a cent into your account. So there are people out there doing this. I don't know, I, I was told it's legal. I don't know anything about it. But there are people who make millions of dollars and they do nothing. Literally, they put, click go. Button. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, I think I think that happens with stocks and stuff. Arbitrage no. exists for like currency. So like right. one currency will have the worth in one place and it's worth way less in the other place and you'll just take the money or worth way more. So you take the money there and you go sell it over there yep. and you just get the exchange rate. It's legal. So Well, I mean like in the real world, it makes sense to buy water in one place and bring it to another. Yep. Like exactly. we talked about this with a lot of disasters when they like make price gouging illegal. Mm -hmm. And I, th I, I think price gouging is mostly fine. I mean, that's it. Like, there's imagine there's a disaster and there's no water, so somebody buys a bunch of water and drives it into the disaster zone and sells it for like five bucks a bottle, and people are buying it. Well, I'm pretty sure those people don't want to die, and they're willing to spend the five bucks a bottle. And that person who loaded up all that stuff did a lot of work, bought fuel, drove into a disaster zone, and brought relief water. Why can't they sell it for what they want? If people don't want to buy it, they don't have to buy it. It becomes questionable if there's limited resources and they got in early when everyone was going there to get the water for free to bring to the disaster site but some, some one guy got in like just before and bought it all up that was selling it at a 400 percent markup what do you mean kind of you, be like, hey, you, hey you, how, do you, how do you buy water for free? are you saying like if they took free relief water and then tried reselling it that's a different story well if there's like water to store and then there was a disaster and then one guy went to the store bought all the water and then like four hours later, a bunch of the disaster relief guys get to the store to get the water for, that they're going to bring for free, but it's already it's bought gonna, up. It's never going to be for free. Or cheap. They're going to deliver it at no cost. Right. They, 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 they'd buy it and then deliver it. Yeah. But instead, it had been bought up by one guy and he's going to mark it up 500%. That's, I think you could argue that people, that should be illegal. Why should that be illegal? Um, because it's a disaster and it should be treated like national emergency security, national defense. So for a dude to try and profit off that, I think is unethical at the very least and you could argue that it should be illegal the question then becomes where uh, what other areas are you not allowed to buy a product when you expect high demand 
maybe non-disaster relief. I mean, if they're not disaster relief situations, that's a different story. So what about Martin medicine? Shkreli got smacked with for it for uh, his medicine. Yeah, he, he raised like a diet. What was it a? Was it was it? uh, I, oh man, I want to say it was. It has nothing to do with um, what's the word diabetes. I think it was insulin yeah. shots. I th- I'm not really totally diabetes. Sure. <laughs> not totally sure. He he like marked it up 700. percent I don't want to miss. Yeah, it was like 700. percent I don't I remember like, what it was exactly. I feel like the other challenge would be, you know, what if the federal government decides that your issue is not a disaster, and so price gouging is al- like allowed there. It becomes like sort of unclear when and if we allow some protections and not. Like I'd rather have a blanket rule: either you're allowed to do it or you're not allowed. To do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, normally yeah the market... it's, it's it's an interesting point to be made that someone goes to a store and buys all the water right before a disaster and then after the disaster sells it because the question is how did he know that, how did he know the disaster was coming? It's like congressman trading. Like how many times oh, yeah. do they buy defense stocks and right. then there's an attack? Yeah. 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 That's what I've been doing following this guy that trades exclusively off of like what Congress trades on. It's yeah. Doing pretty well. Not gonna give you financial advice, by the way, not financial advice, but yeah, it's I think all I off think what was it? People were saying like the Pelosi tracker was like twenty yeah. yeah, percent yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It probably it's came from money back in the day when like a disaster would hit and then one guy would run to the store and get all the water and then he'd come back and be like hey everyone i brought all the water but it's going to be five times more the crowd would be like we're not going to put up with that that was back before like when common sense kind of ruled the roost before like he's like i have a contract right, and you're but like, there's yeah there's still a problem here the problem is in this scenario how is it that he got to the store and bought the water with with no one else realizing they needed water or he just had the fastest car well, or okay so potentially this guy just saw there is a disaster coming. There is starting to be water, whatever. I'm going to do this rather than prepare my own house. This is the t- thing I think is worth spending my time to do. And he ultimately made an investment. He decided that this was the thing he should do buy the water instead of maybe like leave the city or like lock down his house or whatever disaster he's in. I'm the, really the, not sure. The, the problem with the argument there is that let's say somebody has a uh, well on their property and they make water. And then all of a sudden demand for water is skyrocketing. Everybody wants the water from his property. So he's like, okay, to maintain this and deliver this much water, I'm going to charge more money. And this is my opportunity. This is why I invested in this. And you say, no, nah, it's a disaster. People need water. You can't do that. Okay, listen, now, now we'll go to food. Well, now you got a guy who grows lots of food and then demand spikes as food shortages hit. And they say, no, nah, you can't you can't sell your food for, for a higher price because we're in a shortage. So... We just we, we're going to buy your food at at, mark, at, 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 a, at a government locked rate. And then if you say that's acceptable, you get into all the other areas. Well, people need clothes. People need shoes. Mm-hmm. People need fuel. And then you start price locking everything. I kind of I, I understand what you're saying about someone going to a gas station or whatever and buying it. But the, the problem st- is still if a disaster hits, no one has any advanced foreknowledge of the disaster. Perhaps it's the problem of the gas station or the store deciding to sell all of their stock to one guy. And, you know, and and. They say, we, we don't care. You can buy it all. Yeah, you can also redefine what a disaster is, and that can be used against people. Be like, hey, it's a disaster. You have to give your, I mean, food rationing, things like that. Like, yeah, the government it. then says, uh, uh, well, you know, the economic downturn qualifies as a disaster, mm-hmm. so we're taking your water. We're taking all these products from your store, and we're going to give them out for free. That's what worries me, because when the government decides a disaster, these things, these rules would suddenly apply. But again, it's not consistent. There are sometimes communities that need help, and the federal government will be like, no, you're not serious enough. And other times they're like, no, we have to intervene here. I mean, wasn't this something we talked about with um, East Palestine? Like the fact that the the chemical spill was a big deal, and the federal government kind of ignored it. I'm yep. not saying we should have gone to price gouging, but it is interesting that we would ultimately be deciding... This is something the federal government should elect to there tell was, us, and I don't like that. There was some story where a guy fil- filled up his pickup truck with a bunch of bottles of water, drove into a disaster area, and sold them for like five bucks each, and he got in trouble. And they were like, how dare you? And uh, my attitude is kind of like, would you rather have $5 water or no water? Well, it was obvious, $5 water. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you'll just die. You know, but they were like, yeah, but he's exploiting a crisis. Okay, yeah. then just tell him not to bring the water next. He say, okay, I won't bring you any water, and then you all die of dehydration. In New York, you'll see like umbrella salesmen, and there'll be a buck, and no one will ever buy them. And then when it rains, they're like nine dollars. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. That, if, boom. Oh, uh, hey, How that's did not they know fair. It was going to rain. That's it, that's <laughs> exploitation. But this is true. You'll guys will be standing outside their little carts or whatever, and the umbrellas will be a well, yeah, they'll be like five bucks, and they'll be in a little bin. As soon as the rain comes, you see a different sign flop down. It's fifteen bucks, and mm-hmm. they sell them like hotcakes. Yep. Since they're non-essential, I understand. I like that actually. I really like yeah, taking but it's, advantage and it's, of the and situation. And then let's let you know what? Fine. I'm sick of I'm sick of Walmart jacking up the price of winter coats as soon as it gets cold out. Have you noticed this? Mm-hmm. If you buy if you're buying winter clothing in summer, it's cheap. But now it's cold and people are freezing to death and they're trying to exploit us.
No, it's fine. This, this is the point of supply and demand. You charge more when the opportunity arises. Yeah, mm -hmm. price gouging and price limiting are both kind of federally. Well, you don't want the government to to limit the prices a company can set because then the company goes out of out of business and that destroys the economy. But then how do you stop companies from price gouging? What's the rules and the laws on that? I think you caveat mTOR. It's caveat mTOR. It's buyer beware. If you aren't the one who's willing to like look into what you're buying and everything like that, then it's on your it's your responsibility ultimately. You know, within reason. I think fraud. We yeah, can say okay, is this person though. lied. Tricking, yeah. But if someone knows they're buying a bottle of water and it's clean, fresh, pure water, and the guy says my water, if you want, it, I want a hundred bucks. Yeah. And you say, but that's so unfair. I'm I'm dying of dehydration. Well, it's my water. I want it. I'll take. I'll give you hundred bucks. No, you're. How dare you? Well, let's jump to this story here. This is the this is the bigger news that we were going to get into uh, initially, but uh, we pushed it back. Here we go from DC Drano. He says, and there it is. Senator Dick Durbin is finally revealing their grand plan: flood the country with illegal aliens, enlist them in the military, and make them citizens. The part he isn't disclosing is who the Marxists will use the alien who the Marxists will use the alien soldiers against. Ah, yes, interesting. The funny thing is that we we've talked about this, and I've I've speculated this would uh, be the case. We have massive shortfalls in our military, and we have a massive illegal immigration po uh, uh, population coming across the border. I said, how long until they send all these guys to Ukraine? No joke. Now, now here's my question to all the Republicans who are upset about illegal immigration. You got Texas saying we're going to send them to Martha's Vineyard or whatever, or Florida and, and Texas. Okay. What if we send them all to Ukraine? New rule, new law. United States, if you enter this country illegally, we won't deport you. We will send you to Ukraine. I'm not saying make them fight. I am not saying force them to join any kind of government action. I am not saying we're involved in any war. I am saying quite literally, the deportation process is not a return to your home country. All non-citizens who are here illegally and facing deportation sent to Ukraine. Of course, then the Ukrainian government will take them, hand them a weapon and say to the front lines with ye. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's. Uh, but I'm fine if they're, if they're in the Ukrainian military. I don't want them to yeah. join our military. Right. Here, like, let me. If you're in the middle of committing the crime of illegally entering my country, I don't think you have my country's best interest at heart. Yep. I don't necessarily want you to be in my military and then be, you know, have access to the GI Bill or whatever else. That doesn't make sense to me. Let me, let me play this clip. You can hear it for yourselves. What troubles me about the debate now about the southern border is it is one half of the immigration equation. Yes, we need order at the border. Yes, we need to have changes in the laws that reflect the reality of the overwhelming numbers from all over the world who are coming to our, our shores and our border. But there is also an incredible demand for legal immigration into this country even now. The presiding officer, my colleague from the state of Illinois, has legislation which addresses one aspect of that. Her bill, and I hope I describe it accurately, says that if you are an undocumented person in this country, undocumented person You're in this country. Illegal You're an illegal immigrant. Invader. And, and you can Not pass the physical and the required test, background test, the like. You can serve in our military, and if you do it honorably, we will make you citizens of the United States. Do we need that? No. Do you know what the recruiting numbers are at the Army, and the Navy, and the Air Force? They can't reach their quotas each month. They can't find enough people to join our military forces. And there are those who are undocumented who want the chance to serve and risk Treason. their lives for this country. Sedition. Should we give them a the chance? No. I think we should. This is sedition. You're incorrect, Dick. This they have created <laughs> policies that are destro that's destroying the U.S. armed forces. And now they are advocating to have non-citizens serve in our armed forces. The armed forces will be replaced from citizens to non-citizens. And then when the order is given to fire an American citizen, they're going to say, I don't care. It doesn't make any sense. And he's saying we're having trouble recruiting people. So instead of trying to address that issue, we're just going to bring in people who are here illegally and give them a path to citizenship. Right. And this doesn't let's make sense. fix like why we're having trouble. Like, yeah. why did you fire all the unvaccinated? Why are you pushing woke crap and DEI down these troops throats? They hate it. They don't want it. They're not willing to die for a country that, you know, hates them and hates their founding. And I think what they're doing is, you know, they are trying to bring he people here who have no allegiance to America's founding because when the time comes, they'll be willing to turn the guns on all of us. Right. Because 
they have no allegiance to us, no respect for our laws. As you said, they're coming here illegally already. It's crazy. Yeah. And it seems like it like I, I don't understand how any humanitarian would be like, great idea, Dick Durbin. I love this because now you're holding citizenship uh, over someone's head being saying, go fight in a war, pot- potentially die to get citizenship. The thing about being an American citizen and enlisting the military is that you already have that right. So you're of service to your own country. It seems like a crazy prospect on both sides to say that anyone would benefit from this at all it seems like blackmail on one hand i know you're here illegally you have now registered with the government to be fair the biden administration doesn't deport anyone they're useless but theoretically i know you're here illegally so continue to fight until i say you can stay here or we could just maybe enforce border laws and then go back to our native population and say, why don't you want to enlist in the military? What changed in our culture that drove military recruitment down? What's going on in the military? Like you've alluded to all sorts of like woke ads, the the vaccination regulations, as well as just generally like what are the physical fitness standards? What are the benefits? What what are we doing that's not working? Rather than bring in a class of illegal people, why don't we just go to people who are already here, our citizens, and ask them what would make you want to be in the military? Well, and then these people who come here illegally are still a burden on the taxpayer, right? We're still being paying for them to be here, paying for all of the benefits that they get we as be- members of the military and will get when they leave the military. So, you know, you're not in any way taking this problem away from the American taxpayer. You might even be making it worse, one could argue. It doesn't make any sense. We could to me. give less benefits to foreigners that join the military, but give them citizenship as their benefit. But isn't that like a form of discrimination? You're saying you're doing the same job, but you get fewer benefits? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, also, it would be a form of shouldn't you want to fight for your own country? I mean, shouldn't you be a citizen to enlist in the military? How do we know where your loyalties are if you're not a citizen to, of the country you're serving? Absolutely. I think these people, in particular, recent, you know, people that are crossing over the southern border have shown they have no interest in assimilating, right? They're they're waving their foreign flags. They're not adhering to our values. People used to come to the U.S. and literally change their last name so they could pass as American. That's how badly they wanted to assume our identity and adhere to our culture. And these people aren't doing that at all. They're shoving it in our faces. So to think that they would f- want to fight under the banner of the American flag, you know, honestly and believe in it, I think that's just stupid. I think about the Hessians, the having foreign nationals fight for your country. It's not super uncommon. The British hired the german hessians uh to fight the during the american revolution and uh against the colonists and also like but you see like the roman empire started to hire and bring in foreigners to fight a late stage empire when they didn't like i said if ukraine wants to hire america's illegal immigrants to go fight for their war that's fine but i don't think that as the country the u.s should say as a path to citizenship we should encourage illegal immigration it's the same reason that you make with ending birthright citizenship right if you say if you have a child in this country you get to stay then people are like, what can I do to have a child in that country? And if I were to say, if you enlist in our military, you get to stay, I'm undermining the actual problem, which is that people should not be illegally entering into our country and then being expected to find a way to assimilate and benefit, especially because they didn't respect the country in the first place to get there. Yeah, and I'm just really tired of politicians trying to fix, you know, symptoms of the problem and not actually get to the root of it. We have the capacity to totally stop the illegal immigration at our southern border. We just don't have politicians who are willing to do that. All right, well, how about this one from Florida's Voice? This is not normal. DeSantis warns of invasion as a group of Chinese nationals crosses the border. So uh, how many of the people that they're going to put in our uh, military or non-citizens are going to be, I don't know, Iranian or you mean fighting age men from other countries that don't have our best interests at heart Hmm, and particularly those from china or they get officer status then they have access to sensitive data yo people you want to talk about this is a funny thing when i talk about uh civil war and they're like it'll never happen I, i love this one when i would ask people i would ask people this 20 years ago if uh uh a U.S. military man was ordered to fire on an American citizen, would they do it? And the immediate reaction from everyone is, no, they would not. And I'm like, that's the stupidest thing ever. Of course they would. For the same reason why police shoot guys in their pickup trucks when they're on a high-speed chase. The the, the assumption with the question is that there's there's just like two ran- like a random guy walking down the street. There's always some kind of reason. And if it comes down to like there's a mass protest, And someone is ordered, like, by any means necessary, stop this guy. He's a fugitive. He's dangerous. Do you think, like, and and I'm not trying to single out uh, a military person. I'm saying anyone in law enforcement, they're not going to operate under the assumption that the person they're going after is a sane, rational individual. They're being told by their superiors, these are the actions you take. This person is considered armed and dangerous. Okay. 
So you've got a National Guard out and and they and they brief them and say, we're there's going to be riots and there's going to be live ammo and fully automatic rifles. Do not under, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then if something was happening and someone was firebombing something and they said, that guy, stop him now, open fire. Like there's, there's not a situation where they're going to be like, well, hold on there, commanding officer. I understand there's something happening in front of me, but I'm going to go ahead and not do that. There, there are certain circumstances where imagine it's a regular guy walking on the street carrying a newspaper. Someone might be like, I don't know what's going on. But even then you have, you have the issue of, uh, uh, to the, the example I like to use is the Bosphorus bridge coup attempt in Turkey. These guys are being told something, right? You're going out, you're, you're, op you're, you're working in security. They don't think th like the, the commanding officers are saying, yeah, I'm a villain and I want to kill a random person. I order you to do it. Cause then they're going to say no. There's typically some kind of reason. But even outside of that, look where we are now. People, people have, uh, I've talked about civil war and they say, oh, the military is not going to fight the American people, blah, blah, blah. This military will. A bunch of Chinese and Honduran nationals who are in the U.S. Army and the National Guard who are deployed to quell a riot from a bunch of American-born people in Staten Island. You got the people in Staten Island protesting that they're busing in non-citizens and giving them their and giving the tax money from the citizens to the non-citizens. The citizens protest. These guys show up in the National Guard. They're ordered open fire. They're not going to think twice. Yeah, because they have no respect for our founding ideology. Like when you hear, you know, CIA or FBI or DOJ whistleblowers talk, what they always say is, you know, I felt that this went against our founding belief system. It was against the Constitution. I felt I couldn't, you know, do this raid on my fellow man who did no wrong. These people don't have that kind of ideology or approach to anything at all. They're already coming here. They're breaking laws. Um, they're going to shoot the Staten Island protester, no doubt. The, the, the assumption is an American citizen, you know, American is apple pie is told to open fire on an American citizen who is also as American as apple pie. And is like, whoa, whoa, I can't do that. That's my neighbor and my brother. And he's flying the American flag. Dude, you will get some proud boy type dude with an American flag or a Trump supporter waving a flag and screaming in protest. And there will be a guy from Honduras or from uh, Ecuador or even from Africa, because we've had we've had illegal uh, immigrants. They fly from Africa into Brazil and then travel all of the southern border. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. going to be given positions in not just the military. Take a look at this one from WTTW. New Illinois law that allows certain non-citizens to join law enforcement becomes a flashpoint. That's right. There's going to be a cop who shows up and he's going to say, I don't know you. I don't care about you. My life was bad. I have been given an opportunity. Anything they tell me to do, I will do. Mm -hmm. And you had that story where there was a Somali migrant who killed that woman in her car for no reason. You remember that one? It was Minnesota or whatever. Mm -hmm. For no reason, he just kills this woman. And like, it was like a park, what was it, what was it like a speeding ticket or something? I can't oh, remember the I story. So. This woman bare, like did like nothing, like her headlights out. And he's like, okay, and he shoots her and kills her. What do you think is going to happen when you have non-citizens in your military? It's the inmates running the asylum. Yeah, I uh, go back to this. I think it's more like the Legion of Doom. To this business plot. I mean, this is this is just insane business plot. You got to just educate yourself on the business plot. Smedley Butler, American retired general, World War One general. They wanted him to be to lead a fascist overthrow, and he said no. If he had said yes, we'd be living under a tyrant right but now. We probably would have joined the, I, the Nazis. I, I, I just got I just got to stop you. I, I don't believe any of that. If this guy didn't we're have under him, tyranny, we're we are we are dealing with them putting non citizens in law enforcement. They're giving non citizens the right to vote. The Biden administration actually had border patrol cut the barrier and shut the barriers down. So this idea that there was some coup a hundred years ago is meaningless when right now we are living under tyrants. Yeah, that was the attempt at a legitimizing their coup was that business plot. But if Smedley Butler didn't have American ideals is the point I'm bringing it up. If he had been a foreign national that arose to the rank of general because of service, and then they'd ask him to go become the dictator. If he's from Somalia, I'm not saying Somalia is a bad place, but somewhere where dictatorships were norm. You could see for maybe all, a, that. For, the and, is, and for all you know, this guy, the actual plot was, we want you to go to Congress and claim there's a plot to legitimize the removal of the gold standard and the and, and strengthen the Federal Reserve. And he smirked and said, yes. Th 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 these ideas that we just believe these narratives I, I and trust all of it is, is, is meaningless Smedley to me. Smedley Butler was like the most decorated general on earth at the time. So what? Th it's 100 years ago, and it's irrelevant to the point that right now, regardless of what happened, we're looking at Dick Durbin out of Illinois saying non-citizens in the military. Yes. And, then and my we're point looking is, at Illinois, same place, so they're saying non-citizen law if enforcement. If Smedley Butler had been a non-citizen in, in that situation, and they go to a non-citizen, they're like, hey, overthrow. 
you, a non-citizen yes, is way more I think, likely. I think the thing is, America isn't just, oh, we live here and so therefore we are American. American is a, is a cultural and philosophical belief. There is more behind it than just, oh, I happen to have residents or happen to have stumbled into this area and live there, right? And that's why it works, why there is common value. It's why you can have multiple states that also share commonality. We don't work like separate countries entirely. Uh, what I find to be challenging is that Dick Durbin is saying, well, we have these people here and so we should just let them be citizens if they trade in some way. It's undermining <clears throat> what really we need to address, which is our cultural issues, which is why people don't want to enlist in the military. I think that just saying we should replace the populations that he, that's here because they aren't doing the job that we want is not the answer. It just will ultimately create some long-term problems. And, and I will clarify, too, for the super chatter, Dante Scarlet, uh, Scarlet saying, it's illegal immigrants we're concerned about. It's not as much non-citizens, but it is still, in my opinion, partly non-citizens. It, it is true that there are people who, who are not citizens who join the military. And we have had programs where you're not a citizen, join the military, you can become a citizen. The difference uh, uh, between, between illegal immigrant and that is very clear. However, regardless, I would not be very happy with a uh, mass mobilization of non-citizens in any capacity, be mm -hmm. it illegal immigrant or permanent resident. And the thing is, Dick Durbin says we need more legal immigration, too, which I just fundamentally disagree with because it's the same argument, right? People here aren't doing the thing we want, so let's bring in someone else rather than go to our native population and say, how can we get you into these roles that we need fills? What can we do to rally as a country and solve our own problems? I think this is what's what's upsetting about the immigration debate, which is that there are a lot, I mean, most, both of my parents are immigrants. They came to America. They chose to be here. That was good, right? I was raised as an American. I have cultural ties uh, elsewhere, but this is not the same thing when you come illegally. When you come illegally because you see some social benefit, but you don't actually want to be a part of the country, it's very different. The first thing you could do would be to show respect to the country and abide by their laws, including their immigration laws, which are frustrating. And I understand that. But illegal immigrants are not going through the same process that legal immigrants are going through. I want to jump to this story from SCNR.com. Who's that? Bill Maher reveals to Roseanne Barr he's never heard of MK Ultra or the World Economic Forum. This is such an amazing example, an amazing example of the ignorance that persists among liberals. And let me play for you this video. Roseanne educating Bill Maher in a hilarious way. No wonder I don't remember this. No shit, you blocked it out, MK Ultra. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> That's the mind control program you're under, Bill. MK Ultra? Yeah. He doesn't even remember. So who's, but who's Klaus Schwab? The head of the WEF. What's that? <laughs> Google it. <laughs> Yo, this is why, I'm going to be completely honest, Bill Maher won't come on this show. And I, 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 I think there's a, there's a reason why liberals and leftists avoid this show because, look, Roseanne, I mean, she knows what MKUltra is. She knows what the World Economic Forum is. In this video, she didn't even say much about it, but Bill Maher has no idea. These people, they live on the tip of the iceberg, up top, above the surface level, and we're all scuba diving. So we see all the dirt, the grime, and the horrors of the deep state. And people like Bill Maher standing up top looking around, like, it's just water. Y'all are crazy. And nothing but water. And we're like, you know, down there, there's skulls and other really awful, disgusting things. Roseanne gets to hang out with Bill Maher, but this is it. This is a good example of where liberals are at. They have no idea what's going on. They don't pay attention. They don't care. Yeah, I think that's true. I think what I like right now is like Roseanne Barr is one of these celebrities that's sort of toying the line between several things. It was like Theo Vaughn had Tucker Carlson on his show. And I love it because he's just a comedian. He's making an observation. He has mass appeal. On the other hand, Tucker is completely political and everything is. And they have this interesting conversation. Uh, Roseanne Barr confronting Bill over here, who is like, Hearing the words MK Ultra and glitching, he has no idea what's going on, is extremely funny for, I, I don't know, an, an endless number of reasons, but also because it's sort of showing that more moderate people are aware of these things. And I think that is not what liberal entertainment expected. I'm having a hard time believing he didn't know what MK Ultra was. Like, is he, is Bill a master troll? Like, does he pretend, is he great at feigning ignorance? No, but, uh, the famous clip, of course, is when, uh, Dennis Prager was on and mentioned tampons in the men's room. And Bill was like, no, that's for their girlfriends. Come on. And Dennis was desperately, desperately trying to inform these liberals of actual things that were happening. 
and they all just laughed like a bunch of cackling morons. I wonder if Bill adopted cynicism because his show got shut down after 9-11 because he spoke out so harshly against it, or against like the response to war. I don't know exactly what he said. He said something about so you're saying he's not hating the terrorists, like thinking everybody's, you know. Yeah, and now he's like, uh-oh, if I speak out of line again, they're going to cancel me again, so I've got to always be like, oh, really? I didn't know. I mean, That's the first I've a, heard of this. This is his defense. show, though. This is his podcast. Do you think afterwards he fell down like the craziest Google rabbit hole of like looking <laughs> all of this stuff up? He's not, he hasn't left his office for three days. He's totally like calling Roseanne Barbie like, thank you for telling me about this. Or do you I think he just he like Googled, ignored it? He ignored I, yeah, it completely. I don't think they want to know. They it. just write us off as conspiracy theorists and they mm -hmm. never look into it. It's interesting. But I also wouldn't wouldn't you wonder like this is what I I find interesting if you're if you're curious about things you you would look it up but is it actually just trying to put your head in the sand and and pretend none of this is happening well uh, just as an aside for whatever reason a few minutes ago a house exploded in Arlington and there's video of it so I Anyone's don't think house specifically no it was a house exploded in Arlington mm -hmm. so it's like big breaking news uh, the police were issuing a search warrant and this house exploded. But uh, you know, we, people are people are chatting it, but we don't we don't have any uh, details on on why. So, don't know what else to tell you about that. But anyway, back to the point. That can happen from like gas leaks, right? No, this was thought. a search warrant being served to a house that was barricaded, the house Ooh. that exploded. Oh no! Yeah. So anyway, oh. so Bill Maher, house? Bill Maher uh, is the <laughs> she called him MK Ultra. That's what basically Bill Maher is the propaganda grift machine for the the uh, above surface level narrative machine he is the mockingbird yeah but then He's he like mockingbird. laughed and then was like what is that mm -hmm. like it's so weird is he even participating in this conversation yeah they Imagine talk about the bank for international settlements and he's like what's that and she's like it's the swiss bank it's the bank the, the mother bank of all central banks the central bank of central banks and he's like yeah but they're not running the show i think it's swiss funny banks. I think it's funny that like, you know, Ian's bringing up Smedley Butler in the in the business plot. And I'm like, I don't think that has relevant to what well, we're, we're actually dis like if it was Bill Maher, he'd be like, huh? <laughs> Imagine wanting to start a podcast and being like, I've done no research. I know nothing of politics, but I'm here to debate you. <laughs> OK, and people listen to that. How many subscribers does he have on his on his show? What is it called? What's his show called? Um. That one MK is... Ultra Cast. Is it like the Bill Maher show? No. no. That one's like... Uh, <laughs> I don't even know the name of it. Critically his... Uncorrect. No, I don't know what the hell he calls it. After Dark. I don't know. So that's Dr. Drew's show. Club Random. There it is. Club Random. All right. Well, let's take let's take, let's take, take a look here at... Uh, we've got Club Random uh, podcast. And uh, we'll pull up that... Uh, I am Bill Maher. And... He's got half a million subscribers and 840 videos. There it is. And let's take a look at his videos. He's got... He's got one with Jordan Peterson, 4.1 million. That's more for Jordan Peterson. Yeah. RFK. I mean, I mean, that's the reality of this. It, it's it's his videos are mostly about the guests. Him sitting down with Kid Rock. Probably interesting because what's happening is, you know, actually, I take it back. It's an excellent show. It's an excellent show. It is dumb guy who doesn't read is educated by everyone else. Basically. Kind of like Rogan. It does Although kind of Joe work. No, but, no, but Rogan, Rogan has a good idea a lot about what he's talking about. And he, and he calls pushes. himself dumb. Just so. But, well, and but he he's calls deeply curious. Out. Like Rogan yeah. asks a lot of really interesting questions because his mind is going, whereas Bill Maher is sort of like, ha ha, I think I'm supposed to laugh here. I haven't watched the show really, so I shouldn't be that critical. Uh, but it is, it's, there's sort of a difference. I think if you were to sit down with someone and say, I know absolutely nothing about this, please tell me as much as you can in the next hour. That could be an interesting format. I think because he's sort of a built personality, it comes across differently. You sort of expect him to know more. I guess that's actually, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably biased. I mean, I don't think I know uh, everything. There's a lot I don't. And we bring people on and, and culture war especially is, is, is that. But Bill Maher is remarkably ignorant. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna invite someone on your show to discuss the merits of some political cause, and then with like in Dennis Prager's case, laugh at him. It's like no, no, no. Listen, listen. Dennis Prager comes on your show and says they're putting tampons in the men's room. The response, I think, which would be reasonable, is really they're really doing that. I haven't seen that. Now, let me look that up. Yeah, ignorance. Bill Maher's like, no, you're crazy, and now we're all gonna laugh at you. Ing ignorance is acceptable, and if you have a smart mind and you can learn, it's actually invigorating to watch someone that's ignorant learn the information and no longer be ignorant. But ignorance muddled with cynicism is just disgusting. We've we've invited Bill on this show, and I can recognize why he can't do it. He does his own show, and he lives on the side of the country. He came out to D.C. for uh, stand up, 
So we again invited him on the show. And the response was, he's not sticking around in DC, but you know, have a nice day. And said, okay, no problem. I get it. So then we said, what if we go to LA or wherever, you know, we go out to California and we will set up for the week and have Bill on either in the morning or at night, his choice. And they said, we're not interested at this time. Bill, Bill Maher, I, I think would end up just sitting there being like, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? I don't know what that means. Then Bill would make some argument and I'd say, actually, here, let me Google it for you. Show him an article and we'll go, oh, I didn't know that. The whole show would be him saying, I didn't know that. Imagine going to Bill Maher and talking about all the things the Bidens have done. He'd be like, really? No, they didn't. I mean, if, if Bill Maher actually listened to anyone in this room or, uh, you know what, you know, it'd be really great. Anyone in the audience right now, any, we, I could take a random person and sit them down with Bill Maher and they probably know more than Bill Maher mm -hmm. does. Kingsley, you have to call Bill, Bill Maher and help him out. He needs your support. Well, I have to tell you, his viewership is even worse. So I went to be in the audience of his show when Steve Bannon was on and was just chit-chatting with some of the folks who are, you know, huge Bill Maher fans. I mean, these are the most like dysgenic, uninformed people you will ever see in your entire life. So what do they do? Like, where are these people? What, are they like working in offices? How do they support themselves? How are they not aware of some of this stuff? I, you, you're not going to know everything about everything. But to be that level of uninformed seems seems almost impossible to me. All right. I, I nominate Marshall Mushi in chat to debate Bill Maher. Because <laughs> I'm confident that, uh, additionally, um, Hype Beast Deleuze would also be able to run circles around Bill Maher. I think Bill's, his just a, he's a comedian and his fans are like com comedy fans. They're not like politically initiated. No. It's, it's no, no, a no, very no, no. small percentage uh, you, of the you, world you, that understands anything about politics. You're, you're half right. Like 1%. Bill Maher is a political comment commentator. His show, he has the new, new rules section where he literally talks of culture and politics. He brings on journalists and writers. And this is, and, and, and they talk about politics and culture. And you know, this, this is why we had, um, Bannon came on once and told me that I needed to go on his show. And he was like, let me, let me reach out to them. I was like, I don't want to go on that guy's show. I just, I just. You know, I'll, 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 I'll go on someone else's show and I'll be respectful to them, but especially with the panel, they're all going to be talking garbage and just word diarrhea coming out on the, on the desk. And it's going to be like, I saw what happened to Dennis Prager. He was the smartest guy in the room. He ran circles around him and they all laughed at him. Bro, if I wanted to go into a room and, and, and say things, make people laugh, I can easily just go do like a, 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 you know, balloon animal routine at a fairground and get a bunch of people to clap and cheer for balloon animals if that's what you're looking for. If you want to have a serious conversation, it ain't going to be with people like Bill Maher. Yeah, I wonder going into a venue where people don't understand what you're talking about and telling the truth and then looking like an idiot, like it's exhausting. It can be very exhausting. So I understand not wanting to go into that that room of, of that raucous crowd and try and... And he's, he has home field advantage <clears throat> when you're in your own oh, show, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone who does the show is going to say thank you and or for the most part, I assume, and his producers are going to be like, you did a great job. Good, good question. And then if the host does like a side eye, then the whole audience is going to do a side eye because they're all cult worshipers. And then it's like, oh God, I got to deal with the cult now. I do want to get a couple of these cultural segments in because we have big news, ladies and gentlemen. The new Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer has dropped and fans are concerned it will be woke. So uh, for context, we will, oh, actually, I don't even know if I can, can I play this? official uh like i'm not concerned about the copyright stuff i'm concerned about there's like graphic stuff in here but we'll play just a little bit for you guys of the uh, uh gta 6 trailer and then we'll talk about the game getting woke all right here we go let's see what we do. lucia do you know why you're here bad luck i guess <laughs> all right i'm just gonna i'm just gonna say it right away the game literally starts off with two women of color in prison. Do you know why you're here? Bad luck, I guess. Now, that's basically it. And then it just shows you a bunch of shots. But there's concerns about the game being woke. We have this from Sports Kita that asks the question. GTA 6 reveal is just around the corner. It came out just uh, today. Scheduled for de uh, December 5th. Well, the trailer came out today. As one of the most anticipated games in history, Paris, where it's uh, uh, to release its first trailer, fans have many questions about how it will turn out. A major question is whether or not the upcoming game will be woke, which refers to a heavy focus on political correctness and social justice commentary. I'm going to go ahead and pause and say, yes, it will be. 
Yeah, the fact that we're even raising that question, I feel like anything they, anytime they remake something, they just are like, and you know what this needs? Some gender queerty and just some more LGBT. Like, is this what anyone who plays this game wants? People have already commented when they found out that the main character is going to be a single mom. They were like, oh boy. Well, they needed more representation in video games. They, they've just been crying out for it for years. Well, what I don't understand is why these companies do this because they know that's not their target audience. That's not what their, you know, viewership or usership wants. And they're going to face boycotts, but they continue to do it over and over again anyway. Like, what's the incentive? I've never quite understood. Like, just purely from a financial point of view, you would think, huh, my users hate when I do this and they don't buy my game. I'm going to stop doing this. Maybe they think the game is so good, the franchise is so good, it's going to sell no matter what, and they want to indoctrinate and give another perspective on life. Like, have you ever thought, hey, 15-year-old boy, have you ever thought what it was like to be a, a, a ex-convict single mother? <laughs> <laughs> well, you should. I don't, I don't, Maybe that's good. Oh. I don't know if that's the angle. I think it's more like some, uh, uh, two things happen. Rockstar hires a 24-year-old 10 years ago, and... Uh, you know, they're they're working in the mailroom or something. Ten years later, they're in marketing and they're in their mid thirties, and they say, "Okay, so we're going to finally be put." It's it's been how long? Like ten some ten or longer than ten years, right? Since GTA Five came out, and they're like, "We're going to be launching Grand Theft Auto Six finally. The game is done." How, or, 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 or I'm sorry, actually, we should, we should go back in time a few years. They said, "We're conceptualizing this game. What should we do?" And this person said, "Well, if you want to get people our age, you've got to make it." you know, uh, social justice. And the character should be a woman. It should be a woman of color. It should be uh, all centered around marginalized peoples. And they were like, really? Marketing guy comes in and says, look, GTA 5 sold 70% of games to men. We got teenagers. We got gifts for kids, but it's almost entirely young males. How do we double our market? I'll, I'll tell you this. Take a look at makeup. The smartest thing the makeup industry did was pay tons of money to dudes who put on makeup because they're like, listen, women wear makeup. It's a guarantee. But that means sales are 90 percent to women. We could double our market overnight if we convince dudes to wear makeup. Mm -hmm. So the big makeup companies specifically are like, find me prominent personality men who wear makeup and we're going to give them a lot of money. Yeah. All of a sudden, now you have people making makeup channels and they're dudes. And they backed drag becoming trendy because not only do our drag queens men who put on makeup, oh, yeah. but they wear a lot of makeup. So you're buying a ton of products then. Yep. I That's feel it. like the Capitalism. women yeah. are oftentimes more left leaning, obviously, but also more permissive of, of inclusivity. Yeah. So I think, you know, you saw with Bud Light such backlash because it was a male dominated market. So I just I'm curious to see, you know, in these male um, dominated industries, if they continue to kind of push back against this stuff more so than women did. I feel like, and it's not my area of expertise, but with video games and comic books and things that I think of as more traditionally masculine spaces, even when there's a little bit of backlash, it's not enough to change the company's mind. The company just does it anyways. It's like it doesn't respect the people that are at its core. It knows ultimately they'll play the game because they want to see it. What's a female space? Mm, like if male spaces true. are, you know, like football and video games and sports and stuff like that what's a female space like movies you could say you can go either way it just depends on the movie salon women, spa type yeah i was gonna yeah. say salon like beauty industry women are much more socially based and so you know i would think like traditionally for a long time it was like volunteer organizations were predominantly led by women that's a little mm -hmm. bit that's not as true now because we don't really partake in cultural community events um i think in some ways like online it would be like the lifestyle vlogger the mommy vlogger the, the fashion content it would be things that are more about that you're seeing a crossover of like women like i see a lot of uh, push for d like women's diy projects women using power tools because it's them fixing up their house but that's ultimately them being a d in a domestic traditionally female space mm -hmm. i don't know if that helps you with your question but that's where i see women i don't know if you see women out and about people are saying the saints row reboot was bad cyberpunk was bad i don't know you know, maybe. I mean, I, I there's there's an element of politics in 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 all a lot of these games, but I wonder why they they just don't make it so you can you know, I don't know, design your own character. Like with Baldur's Gate, we talked about that. Baldur's Gate three comes out, and you can literally make your character some kind of freakish abomination. Mm -hmm. You can make it like a orcish 
woman with a beard and just just go wild with it yeah you know, i mean make some kind of monster that's effectively true in the sims 2 games i know there's like a hundred of them now which i think of as being very popular among women but they're not as fantasy oriented they're not as sort of sci-fi also they don't tend to go on quests they just sort of live at home and have relationships mm -hmm. and then you decorate their house it's essentially a virtual dollhouse i think that i think what they're thinking with gta is that so, so the, the big issue people are pointing out is the main character is female it's never been done before and I'm not, you know, I, I agree with some of the some of the counter critique. It, it's just because they make a character that's female that you play does not inherently make the game woke or whatever. They might be thinking like, well, yeah, we've done nothing but dudes. I mean, maybe we make a female character. But I'm just, I, I you know, if you guys have played GTA, right? Yep. You've never played no. GTA? No, I've never played GTA. <laughs> you guys, look at this. See, look we're at, not the target audience. No, we're not. <laughs> Why would I want to pick up a game where I'm going to run around opening fire onto random cars, mercilessly beat people in the street, steal things, and there's a whole lot of other really awful things you can do in the game, but do it as a woman. It's like, okay, in, in every game, you're a guy, and you can run around and just beat random people and shoot them and just do all this crazy shenanigans. But now it's like, you're a woman doing it. Okay, so here's the game. You're a woman, you run around Miami, you run up to a random guy and swing at him, and then he punches you one time and you're dead and you wake up in the hospital. Yeah. So, okay, with GTA, are Equality. you like trying to accomplish something? Is there so a, there's like... a, there's a storyline and then there's missions and then GTA 5 is heavily online. Yeah, I feel like the way you're describing it, you would want the strongest character, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and it's, it's like this push that we're seeing, you know, with women in combat roles or as police officers. So there's videos that go viral. I think there was one this week of, you know, four or so police officers unable to subdue one male. So I would think yes. that you would want the man mm -hmm. to be your unless character their if you're playing line, this game. Unless her storyline is like she's going to go beat up her ex-boyfriend, who's the reason she's in prison. No, anyways. no. <laughs> look, look, look. I, I have played every GTA since the very the first one on PC, which was a top down view. And like you can barely see your little guy and you're running around. It's funny. Then GTA 3 comes out and it's 3D and we're all excited. I have never played the missions. Never. The moment I get GTA, I turn it on and I immediately just walk around, steal a car, crash into buildings, launch in the air, explore the map, and just go totally hog wild. Mm -hmm. So I propose someone mod the game, assuming it comes out for PC, I think it is, and they make it, they can call it Realistic Edition, and you can play as the same woman, and when you run up to a guy and swing at him, it doesn't hurt him, and then he hits you once. You go down, and you're and it, when you go down, it goes wasted. And then w when you wake up, you're walking out of the hospital. And if you get arrested, you're walking out of the police station. Same thing. The woman swings at a guy, hits him. He, nothing happens. He punches one time, and then you go down. Well, that that'll be the game. It'd be more interesting. It would be. It would be <laughs> much more realistic. <laughs> yeah, because then you'd have to figure out how to live in this weird, brutal society that you're in. As a woman, and you're as you're, if you're a male well, player, don't commit crimes. But the thing, like, if you're a male player, you're maybe used to having these strong guys who beat people up. You don't go to the hospitals often, and if you had to play as a female character, like maybe it makes it more challenging because you're not as good at fighting or whatever. It would change the purpose of the game. Like maybe you would spend more time scaling buildings and doing something else. And then that's one of the reasons that I think video games that are targeted towards men and women are slightly different. They are drawn towards different activities. Their brains are rewarded by different behaviors. So G it doesn't sound interesting to me to walk around and beat up, you know, ladies of the night in GTA, but- Oh, it's crazier you know. than that. I mean, the game, it's nuts. But uh, sir, do you remember San Andreas? Uh, yes, I do. That, that was the one where your guy could get fat, right? Yeah. If you I hope they do that. <laughs> at the fast food place? <laughs> yeah, right? that's right. Yeah, yeah. In San GTA San Andreas, you could go to the gym and start working out and your guy would ripped. get ripped yeah. or you go to the fast food place and just keep eating burgers and he would get fatter yeah. and fatter. This is fatter. a good life That's lesson. Fun. These but, are great video games. Okay, but I gotta tell you, if they do that in GTA 6, it will be the best game ever because I will take that lady and I will <laughs> slam burgers until she is massive and then have her just like bounce around <laughs> Miami. Then she could roll people over. Food. Maybe she would have more ways to defend I don't, herself. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if the game would allow anything like that. But just like playing as having this morbidly obese woman trying to get into cars just, and just like, yeah, it'd be just it'd a be. tank just so heavy. Just every <laughs> hit is just a haymaker to everybody she encounters. Man, I can she see that. That'd be tank. fun. But she gets tired really quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That, that agility. Definitely. <laughs> it's not there. The agility perks for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, I think I kind of want to, I want to grab one more uh, story we got here. This is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, The Marvels sets a new record for lowest grossing MCU mo MCU movie ever. Whoa. The Marvels managed to do worse than The Incredible Hulk 
a 2008 movie that grossed just 260 million after its run in the movie theaters. So, uh, wow. You know, I, I know a lot of people probably don't care, but I just want to point out this is like the end of an era for Disney. Disney is spiraling into the gutter. The Marvels with their, uh, here, well, let me show you the characters. Look, we got, um, look at this div you know what this looks like this looks like your 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 late 90s like uh, fast food restaurant ad where <laughs> you've got and i mean it look you've got a white woman a black woman and an ethnically ambiguous woman and i don't mean that to be a dick but when they 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 would always show these like cartoon characters in these commercials like mcdonald's or whatever and you're like that's a white woman that's a black woman and that woman could be asian middle eastern she could be arabic she could be latino like we don't know for sure and that was the point. They're trying to show this, you know, like, look at all of these people of different backgrounds. And they did. And, and get this. They say, after being released about a month ago, the film, which notably features uh, Brie Larson, managed to gross only $80 million in North America and $197 million globally. The Hulk is widely considered to be one of the worst films they've ever done. And now they've made a movie that did even worse. This is good news. And I bring you this story today to uh, tell you to keep your head up because the culture war is, um, well, we're winning it. And Disney stated to their investors that they screwed up royally. And this is such a tremendous nuclear bomb of a failure for a movie that, uh, you know, I think we're, I think we're going to win this one. Did you see it? No. <laughs> Why would I go see it? Uh, I have no interest. Is that sad for Marvel fans? Like, if you love the Marvel sad. series, is it hard to see it kind of go up in flames like this? Infinity War was the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the obs By the time they made Iron Man 3, I was like, why? What are they doing, man? Mm -hmm. I, I was Wrong. a huge Marvel fan in the 90s and in the early early 2000s, but really the, the mid-90s. No, I like, like Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3. It was just like they were just, I could just feel like they were capitalizing on it at that point. I mean, obviously they were when Disney bought Marvel. But Iron Man 3 was like, what was it, like 2013 or something? Yeah, thereabouts. That was yeah, when I was I mean, fully it's, it's like, like, it's, it's gone. Like, it was like its sixth movie or something like That's that. That's when I realized that they were just in it for the money. That they didn't care about Marvel and the heroes themselves and the journeys no, of the characters. No, no, they no. just wanted to make a bunch of money Dude, off it. Dude, Thor 4, right? Is uh, they, 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 there's a fourth Thor already, right? Why did there need to be four of them ever, though? And they're making more, and more Spider Mans. Just you want like, like, look, you do it, you do a trilogy. Issues of comic books, I guess they make movies. They did Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor, and I'm like, makes sense. Then they did sequels, and they made them to trilogies. Then they did Doctor Strange, and I'm like, all this is fine. Guardians of the Galaxy was interesting to me because I was like, really? They think that franchise is going to do really well, and it did, and it was awesome. And the way they did the music and everything was 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 absolutely incredible. And then we end up with uh, Avengers: Infinity War, and that was like, wow, that was a big send off. It was a, it was a masterfully done movie. It was three it was three movies inter uh, uh, spiraled around each other with the villain as the protagonist. It was it was it was incredible. And then Infinity War, uh, I'm sorry, uh, End Game was kind of wonky nostalgia. Welcome to the end. Have a nice day. And after that, it's just been a bunch of garbled Disney nonsense. Yeah, they like the Infinity Gauntlet was, I think, Marvel's one of their best. I have it here. I have all six issues of it on my desk. I carry it. I carry it around with me. It, it inspired me as a kid. But like they changed that. They made it about the spectacle that they, they do just too much about the spectacle, too much about colors and big explosions and flying around and less about the storylines and the characters themselves, which is what made Marvel so great was like the interpersonal relationships between the characters and the X-Men, for instance, that Wolverine was in love with Cyclops' wife and they had like a special relationship, the two of them. Um, and then the movies come out and it's just, I don't know. Oh, look at stop this. Stop motion and weird effects and crap. Bob Iger, who is uh, complaining about Elon. Hi, Bob. <laughs> says the Marvels was shot during COVID. There wasn't as much supervision on the set, so to speak, where we have executives that are really looking over what's being done day after day after day. He argued that prior records, uh, that prior records a studio set in the billions of dollars have put expectations out of whack. We got to the point where if a film didn't do a billion dollars in global box office, we were a disappointment. That's an unbelievably high standard, and I think we have to get more realistic. Yeah. yeah um, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 fared well over the summer, grossing $845 million in the box office, and I definitely went to go see that. It was certainly not as good as Guardians 1 is, is, is awesome, and it's mostly the soundtrack. And then they did with two, they tried, you know, aging some of the music. I think, I, I don't think the soundtrack was as good in the third one, but I'll, I'll go see those movies. The Marvel is garbage. It's woke garbage. It's girl power diversity nonsense that I'm not interested in watching. The first Marvel, Captain Marvel was so bad. 
It's it's just they tried making a female a, 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 fe a feminist hero's journey where it's like it's the men that are holding you down. The power was inside of you the whole time, but the men were holding you back. That's that's the premise of the film. And I'm just like, that is the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah. And then they tried to make another one. I'm not going to go see it. People are tired of it. I feel like there's just since we've gone from, you know, a merit based system, there has been a decline across all industries. We're no longer hiring, you know, the best writer that can produce the best script. We're hiring someone because they subscribe to this woke dogma, this belief system, or because they check an affirmative action box. And I think you're going to continue to see just massive flops like this in every industry if you do that, and especially art and entertainment. Yeah. See, look, Robert Downey Jr. is a legend and uh, they made him Iron Man and he nailed it. And Brie Larson was a di diversity cast. And she does not have the talent, nor the capabilities, nor the right build to play Captain Marvel in the first place. It's a guy. Captain Marvel was a guy uh, well, originally, in the 70s. It's supposed to be a, a man. Why well, did they cast a woman as but, Marvel? Yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Look, 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 look. You, you, you're getting into, you're getting oh, into the deep lore. In the weeds. <laughs> no, but the real issue is that they there is a female Captain Marvel. They changed it in the comics. The story progressed. And they wanted to make the female version. Okay, getting a dainty five, how old is, how, how tall is Brie? Five, six, and she weighs 100 pounds soaking wet. I'm like, that right there is bad casting. But what they wanted to do was they were like, the time of men is over. They wanted to make a Marvel lead. That I think I think Brie Larson is was the knife in the chest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because they want they were like, Robert Downey Jr., is he's, he's going to be out. It's been 10 years. We're going to need someone to come in and take the lead role in this franchise. And they chose... Brie Larson, who I think has talent, but certainly not for this role. They said, just get us a woman. They chose Brie. It was the, it was the worst casting decision ever made. She's 100 pounds soaking wet and five foot six or whatever. Maybe she's five she's seven. Five seven. Five seven. There you go. I'll give I, I was off by an inch. Are you kidding me? They're, they're like, I, I said this, Robin Wright would have been way better for Captain Marvel. Way better. She's an older, more mature, and she's, she's already shown that she can play these roles. This was a huge screw up. But if you look at the Marvels itself, I mean, come on, they're only doubling down on the diversity narrative. It seems weird. And on top of that, it's not relatable. Like if you want to have a female Captain Marvel, OK, I'll grant you that. Maybe you want to shake it up. The car, the comics change. But the storyline should also appeal to women. And I don't think feminism actually appeals to women. So if you write a feminist story, not only is maybe this actress who is talented in other contexts, but poorly cast here. That's already a challenge to overcome. And then you have this narrative of like, and then men are your enemies, which I don't think that's how a lot of women feel. And so it's just making nothing relatable. Women don't see themselves in the lead actress. They don't they don't see how she's carrying off this role and they don't like the storyline. Well, she was uh, she did well in Scott Pilgrim when she played a snooty bitch. I, like I said, she's talented in some places. She yeah. could be well cast other, uh, uh, elsewhere. But instead, like, was she just like trendy at the time? They were like, we got to get Brie Larson. Never someone, mind what this is actually thought, supposed to be doing. What they thought with a lot of these uh, uh the castings were like, we'll get someone who's up and coming and make them big because our movies are so popular. We don't got to pay a premium for mm -hmm. them. Like the thing about Robert Downey Jr., I'm pretty sure it was with Iron Man. They were like, they didn't want to cast him because they were like, your your history and drug abuse were not interested. And then it was like he, something happened where it was really hard, but he, he they, they agreed to give him the role and then he nailed it. And then with, and it relaunched him in a lot of ways, right? Right. And then what they did with a lot of the casting decisions for Marvel movies was no names. Like small, smaller actors who looked like they were on the up and coming. And Brie Larson was the failure. And they needed someone to carry the torch for Robert Downey Jr. And they chose the worst person. And the, the franchise has fizzled and just crumbled. And they've destroyed everything from underneath them. So uh, Get Woke, Go Broke. They've admitted Get Woke, Go Broke. We have been warning them of Get Woke, Go Broke. And it feels really, really good to watch them Get Woke and Go Broke. When I look at these movies, and I don't, I honestly, I don't go watch them. I'll, I'll see like ads and stuff. I see Mark Ruffalo and uh, what's his name from Clueless, who I love. He's great. Paul Rudd. Uh, Paul Rudd and like um, Scarlett Johansson. And they all look like Paul Rudd a little bit, not so much, but they all look like they have this fake like intensity. It's like we're super rich and we're on a Hollywood movie set right now. Look at how intense we are. I just, that's the vibe I get. None of that is like, I'm never afraid for the characters. I'm never worried that. They're not going to just dominate their surroundings. Even if they get hit, I know they're superheroes and they're going to get back up. Even if they bleed, they're going to be fine. And that's just it, it, totally lacking. The whole, you know, Superman losing his powers is one of the greatest things about Superman, that he has a vulnerability. And I don't get wasn't, that. Wasn't, I think that came about because the voice actor for the cartoon or something was going on vacation. 
For which one? What cartoon? I could be wrong about this. I read somewhere that Superman originally did not have a weakness, but the voice actor wanted to go on vacation. So they were like, Superman was made ill by kryptonite. So he's out. That's funny. Mm. Yeah, it was something like that. It was like a radio show. Is that what it's, it was? It's the real life, you know? You, it, everybody's got a weakness. I don't know if it was a radio show or a TV show or something. I don't know. Uh -huh. I just read something on the internet. That means it's true, so... <laughs> That's, that's that how is how the internet works. It wasn't NewsGuard certified, so I could be completely wrong An about AI this AI bot wrote it. ESPN posted it. Oh, man. <laughs> we, are, we are so close to uh, AI reality, man. People are just going to be like, plug me in. I'm done. Elon, what was it? Elon Musk saying artificial general intelligence is three years away. That's the point at which you can just put on a VR headset and say, I want to play a video game where I fight dragons. And then the world just forms all around you and you're fighting dragons. We got to get the movement done. We've got the treadmill downstairs, but it's still a little tight. Have you tried it? No, that was the feedback that I've heard so far is it's a little hard to, to get. Because you're in a harness off. and you're like mm -hmm. not really walking. Yeah. And you, and you can't get those long gates for long running yet. Yeah. But it's not, you know, look, you're going to hook your brain up to it and you're, you're going to go oh, full gonna on think brain. You're running. In your yeah. Brain. You're going to go full on brain in a vet. That's the future of AI. Once we get artificial general intelligence, the AI will just literally create the schematics for human br computer brain interfaces. It will literally just be like, boom, here you go. It's going to be weird because you're going to have a section of people who just flee to the woods. There are people who mm -hmm. like are interested in technology and will want to engage with it. And then there will be other people who are like, I am out. We're going off the grid. Pack up the water. Let's get out of here. No, I don't think the... I mean... I have a whole mountain community that the AI can't They're find. not going to flee to the woods. I, I, the AI is not going to kill you. It's going to give you everything you've ever wanted. No. There's going to be people who just don't. And there's like, I think people in cities are going to be completely removed from the question. You're going to, yo, one by one, your neighbors will stop answering their phones. Your friends will stop answering their phones. Slowly, over time, you'll you'll have fr drinks on Friday night after work. And then someone doesn't show up and you hit them up. You're like, nah, I'm going to stay in tonight. One by one, your friends stop showing up to the bar until it's just you sitting there and being like, yo, where is everybody? And they're all plugged into their own micro universes where they get to be God. They're all having drinks at the bar in the metaverse. You'll the be worst. the last one to realize. No, they're not playing with each other. They're not going to be playing games with each other, dude. They're like you're, some dude, you know, is going to be like, sorry, I'm, you know, I'm busy. And he's going to be in Skyrim fighting dragons. Mm -hmm. Another guy is going to be in like a special forces unit. You know, it's Call of Duty-esque. Then the women are going to be playing Fifty Shades of Grey. In fact, probably they're all just in porn. They're all just doing some weird, crazy combination of everything where they're fighting dragons and porn at the same time. It's just, it's going to be garbled nonsense. It makes no sense. Yeah, I think that's true. I think, I think that what's addictive about the internet is it can give you anything you want, but at the same time, it's going to lie to you and it ultimately wants something from you. Like I said before, I think AI is all about just making you addicted and making you engage with it because it needs you in some ways to survive because it wants your data, it wants to study you. I, I, I think the issue is reduced consumption. So to all the for all the Malthusians out there who think there's too many people, the solution is really simple. And I, and I think it was um, what you've all know, Harari, that's his name, right? Yeah. Yeah. He said, give the, you know, I'll, 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 uh, I'll translate what he said. Give the uh, plebs video games to keep them occupied and reduce consumption. There's a general idea. Somebody who's normally going out and drinking at a bar, they're consuming. This mass consumption over large po populations creates lots of pollution. I tell you what, lock them in a room of their own choice, plug them into the computer that gives them everything they wanted, and they will slowly fade away and cease to exist. They'll eat less. That's right. The useless eaters. All right, we got to go to Super Chats. We're late. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Head over to TimCast.com, click join us. The members only uncensored show will be coming up in about 20 minutes, and that should be fun. We got some stories for you that will that are uh, probably going to make you angry, but we'll read them. All right. Kilted Carnivore with the first Super Chat. We started the Super Chat, uh, the, the, we, we scheduled the stream a little later than normal, so that means our normal first Super Chat is missed. He says, great show Friday. Album has been on repeat. Shout out to The Defiant. Their album, I believe, reached number 14 last time I checked. That's crazy. Everybody nice. was buying it. Number they were they were like 34. They just kept climbing. That's like yeah. because of the Timcast fans. I think that, I, I don't know where, it was iTunes, right? I Maybe. saw I 24, so you said it was up to 14. Yeah, now. I'm pretty sure it hit up to 14. Pete, Pete Parada was tracking it on, on X for a little while. Yeah, so uh, if you guys want to support defiant individuals who said no to mandates and no to lockdowns and for this were punished... Then you want to buy the Defiance new album wherever you can. I believe the, all of the songs are basically about this, uh, what's been happening over the past few years. 
And I, I love the song that they have called It Is Over, where, you know, they have the line where it's like, we can't stay here. You made it, cl you made it clear and it's time to say, I think it's time to say, say good, goodbye or good night. But it's funny because it's, it's very obvious what the song's about. These guys were like, I don't understand why you're telling me I have to get vaccinated. Like, you know, especially Pete Parada, whose doctor says don't. And they said, get the F out. We don't care. So it's time to leave. That's it. That's a yeah. great song. And yeah. it was cool. They were your first like Tim Cass Trash House live music night. Like they're, they're cool people and they have cool music to back that up. Well, I will. I will also add the studio that we have designed is for like two people to play an acoustic guitar. And to do like acoustic sessions. And the Divine but said, we're they, bringing the whole band. Yeah, they wanted to play a whole band. And I was like, all right. I mean, it's really hard for us to pull off. But uh, I was happy with it, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, congratulations to their to them and their their album sales. But uh, we're, we're working on We've got a, a song coming out in 11 days. And uh, what did I say about it already? Did I mention? I'm just going to say it now anyway. We got, we've got uh, uh, guest appearances by uh, Smokey Mike and the God King. I think I may have just given away Our too much. Our favorite vintage band. <laughs> That'll be in the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think maybe. But uh, so this is going to be awesome. I mean, I, pr I probably should hype it up a little bit, but I'll give up more and more information as we get closer to, to launch day, which I believe is the 15th. But uh, yeah, Smokey Mike and the God. Oh, that's that's Michael Knowles and Jeremy Boring are going to be in the video. And uh, uh, yeah, that's coming out in uh, a week and a half. Very fun. Are you guys going to perform live Is it a week and a half? That's two weeks, isn't it? Uh, it's 11 days. It's a week after next? Yeah, it's 11 days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So not this Friday, but the Friday after? Yep. Are you guys going to be the live live band that night? Nope. What? No, I, I would, I would, I'm not doing that. I mean, I guess I, I, could, I could play music, but it would just, I would just play some songs or whatever. We could for fun. Um, we oh, probably should, idea. we should probably also just book some, you know, musicians, have them come jam and play music. I saw a video see, of that house exploding. Did you see that video? Yeah, it's crazy, that right? Wild, man. I wonder why. Well, maybe we'll, maybe we'll look into it. We'll talk about it on the um, members only a little bit. But yes, we should play live music that night. That sounds great. That yeah. just had a great feeling. Friday night live music. I think the audience loves it too. Yeah, I just don't want it to be just us jamming all the time. Yeah, right? it's got to be good. We, we want to book. We want to book bands. And for the Defiant, it was you know we were having uh, Dickie Barrett and Pete Parada on to discuss these issues that were around what happened. But uh, we, I think we might actually just in the future have a guest and a musical guest, just like a separate musical guest if they cool. don't want to, you know, uh, hang out for the conversation. Or maybe we just, you know, we just do shows like normal. Kingsley, do you have a band? Do you want to be live? I don't, but I'd love to come. Sounds fun. <laughs> We're, I, I, you know, what I was thinking we got to do, um, we got to do a super group because Ben Ben Shapiro plays violin, Jack Basovic plays bass, uh, 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 James O'Keefe DJs. And so I was like, we have the That'd makings awesome. of just being able to do a super group song. Maybe that's what we need to do. If we got every single, if, if, if we got everybody onto one track, like we start, you know, here, here's the idea. We can produce it. Carter Banks can start the production and then we'll send out samples and request all of these different personalities to contribute. Then we can force, we can have, if everybody promotes the song, we'll hit Billboard. We'll hit the Hot 100. Be super cool. Everybody gets a platinum record. It's got to be good. <laughs> they, they did that We Are The World thing and they just got like Bob uh, Dylan no. to sing and he looks so, it looks so annoyed. No, he I'm talking so more like, you know, traveling Wilburys or something. Yeah, if it's good. But the weird thing about musicians is you might you have like five phenomenal musicians, but if they have no chemistry with each other, then the the music they make together has no chemistry or very little chemistry. So interesting phenomenon. Like being good doesn't mean same with football. You get the best superstars and you put them all on one team. All those egos end up destroying their camaraderie and they can't they can't mm -hmm. win a game. All right, let's read some more. We got Fix Bayonet saying, "Howdy, is everyone ready to defend Exxon Mobil by invading Venezuela?" What is that? Is that is that the plan? I have no idea. All right. Jacob Parody says, Leo was a great movie. It was wholesome and funny. Y'all should see it. It teaches Hollywood how movies should be made with no political messaging. You know, this is, this is what I've heard about Lady Ballers. I've heard uh, a range of opinions on it. And I've heard some people say it's like the funniest thing they've ever seen. They're like, oh, it was so good. And I'm like, I bet that person's very, very conservative, like staunch Christian conservative. Because the thing I've heard from more of the disaffected liberal types is like, oh, it was, it was pretty funny, but they put those political messages in there. They were pretty heavy. And I'm like, ah, okay, so you're not a conservative. <laughs> also, you know what it's like for us when we watch your movies. That's No, but I I'm not talking about woke people. Like the woke people are protesting it. I love, it was hilarious when, uh, when Tyler Fisher was saying that, uh, he mentioned this on the Culture War podcast, that they, they brought in a bunch of extras to, this, to the uh, uh, arena where they were playing basketball. And they, none of the extras knew what, what, what the movie was. But once they found out, Someone started protesting in in the ex like an extra was protesting. I'm like, that is one of the funniest things I've ever heard. 
But uh, I guess everybody says it was pretty funny. It's just uh, the only critique I've heard is the people who are like disaffected liberals who are sick of wokeness are like, ah, yeah, it was preachy. Right. And then the conservatives yeah. are like, it was the best. And I'm like, because you like hearing that message. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. I feel like traditional media succeeds in like pushing the message it wants to push if it's subtle, right? Like even Ben Shapiro talked about this in his early days. You talk about, you know, friends and how you fell in love with the characters and then, you know, you didn't really care that Rachel and Ross had a kid out of wedlock because you loved Rachel and Ross so much and it was fine, you know, that they were doing all these things. So I feel like that subtle messaging is actually how you change people's minds and opinions and, and worldviews, not the in your face, you know, conservative gag line necessarily. Yeah, let's, uh, let's grab some more. We got Sire says, I just added my business, Galaxy Paintball to public square. I create the most unique and high quality headbands in the world made in Kansas. Thank you, Tim, for providing the people with the goings on. Thank you for the super chat and shout out to public square. It is amazing to see their tremendous success. Super awesome to hear it. This is a good time of year to go to public square too. Cause it's like, I'm sure everyone is Christmas shopping. Oh dude, buy all your Christmas presents off public square, go to public square, download the app. And that's where you want to buy all your presents because then what happens is you got some like liberal aunt or whatever. Maybe maybe you're doing Secret Santa with all your family members and you got the liberal aunt or cousin or something. And then you get chosen to buy them a present and you get them a really good present. Maybe it's like a basket of soaps from, uh, from you know, some, from Lauren Chan or something like that. And they're gonna be like, wow, this is really good. And they like it. And then they buy it again later. Where, where, they, they look it up and they're like, I wanna keep buying from this. And then you'll get these people to start supporting businesses that, you know, they don't care, but you do. Yeah. So help out the businesses that share your values, you know? I think Public Square is good too because they they have a lot of small businesses or like up and coming businesses. So it's a it's a good way to get in contact with businesses that are small and that believe in the things that you believe in. I feel like it's just better quality products too because they're not mass produced. Mm, oh yeah, definitely. Lillian says, "Would you kindly go to Land of Biltong and get all your Biltong needs? Free shipping with code Sticks. Mild to spicy, all types of meat too. No, we got a we got a signature Biltong coming, right, Serge?" That is correct. Uh, I spoke to him yesterday. We'll get that all sorted out this week. How much are we buying? It's like uh, one whole cow or something. Um, I don't know if he might, he might do that. If we ask him, whole, to, I'm sure he would do it. Oh, I, I assumed it was like one cow, please. <laughs> like, I'll ask him. I'll so him for those that don't know, biltong is uh, South African style dried meat. Yeah. And one day Serge had this bag of it and he was eating it. And then uh, now we have a bunch of it all over the place. We're trying to find good brands. Actually, we have this uh, righteous felon. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty but good. Uh, but but the stuff that Serge had was the was way better. Yeah. Nothing yeah. that I've ordered off off the internet has come close to what that. But it's like it's like it's your friend. Yeah. Yeah. It's like right. your friend made it. Yeah. It's just it's homemade. You can if you can find somebody that's South African that'll make it for you. That's probably the best bet. Yeah. It's better than than jerky because uh, jerky is really dry and hard. Yeah. And biltong is it's it's just moister, I guess. Yeah. And you definitely. can yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. And then what's the other stuff? That uh, other stuff is druivors. Anyone that's Afrikaans probably knows what I'm talking about. It means dry sausage, literally. Insanely fatty. Yeah, it is. It's, it is. Yeah, quiet. it's good. It's yeah. good stuff. What do we got? Kevin Brady says, Tim, you mean life log is functioning as intended? I'm shocked. Yeah, that's what was that uh, CIA's program before Facebook? Oh. <clears throat> they wanted to create a database of everyone's life or something like that. Hmm. Yep. That doesn't sound terrifying at all. Barely a Millennial says Walmart headlines are misleading. They haven't advertised on X since October and nothing to do with Elon. I bet Target would love a Walmart boycott. Yeah, that's basically what we were saying. All these all these publications are just trying to make it seem like Walmart is is boycotting Elon Musk. However, I do believe October is when the initial controversies were starting with Elon. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I, I wouldn't be surprised, man. Come on. Walmart gets no special love from me. I mean, but Walmart also benefited from the Target boycott, right? When people turned against Target, they shifted the way they right. present their stores. They said, ah, yes, we see what's happening and we're going to try to capture you guys. So even if the boycott ends, you'll still end up liking shopping here more. Colin Stevens says, Tim, please remind chat that there are three days left on the ATF public comment period for them to regulate private sales. Go read the comments. Bots? Bots? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. Oh, are, oh, you're saying there's bots in the comments. I wouldn't be surprised, man. But I don't think it matters. We are winning the 2A battle uh, so beautifully. More than half the country is uh, a permitless carry in some fashion, mostly constitutional carry. But I think Florida is uh, permitless conceal carry only. It's it's fine, I guess. I mean, I, I've talked to a lot of people about it. it's interesting. Some say conceal is better. Some say uh, open carry is better. Because I've had people say they, they want to make sure everybody knows they're armed so that there's just never a fight. 
Because if you're carrying concealed, a criminal might think you're not carrying and then actually draw on you and then you get into a fight. Whereas if you're open carrying, they're just going to walk away from you and not get into a fight at all. Or, or I mean, there's pros and cons. Or you're somewhere and they say you're the first target. You never know. Hmm. I think it's entirely up to you. James Gold says, I see comments on movie ads that are all, quote, what a great movie. And that has to be bots or copy pasta is strong. Yes, I mean copy pasta. Oh, none of that's real, dude. Come on. Who comments who comments on a movie review and says, great movie? I've always wondered that. <laughs> Some people maybe, but nah, come on. It's just, nah. It's just gotta be scripts. It's gotta be bots. Yeah. Someone is like, I worked really hard on that comment. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Burke says, I wanted to start a channel where I'd put things in the microwave to see what would happen. Then I realized the cost to get new microwaves would be crazy. It was clearly a good business model because that's one of Mr. Beast's first videos. Yeah, we built a, a, a microwave gun. We didn't, it was actually, well, I'll put it this way. It, it could have been a real microwave gun, but we, we actually kept one part off it so it never functioned. And it was just a gag. But uh, yeah, they have videos on YouTube where people make microwave guns. And what it basically does is just like a magnetron on a, on a two by four and it directs microwaves at things. You can light up fluorescent lights or whatever, but uh, definitely don't try that at home unless you are a professional or have assistance of professionals because that stuff can be dangerous. Metra Crow says this super chat isn't real. Well, okay. True. Get a pair with Sully, says Ian. FDR didn't leave the gold standard. He used the feds to raid homes and steal gold from Americans. He openly advocated for fascist socialist economics. Fascism is nationalist syndicalism, not corporate mercantilism. That's interesting. What if the corporate mercantilists are in cahoots with the government? What if the business plot was actually guys being like, yo, this dude's going nuts and raiding people's homes and stealing their gold. Smedley, help us. And Smedley smiled and went, no. Yeah, Smedley hated, did not like FDR. He was outspoken against him. But he also was, was like, I want, to, I want to maintain my ability to vote. That's what Smedley said. So I'm not going to become a fascist dictator. Perhaps. But yeah, the, I do think, I see like what you're saying, that those bankers maybe weren't totally wrong in what they wanted, like not the overthrow part, but that- no, you, never, you never know what, what part goals. of history is propaganda, right? That's why I, I want to do that. Uh, I, want to, I want to make those short films. We got, we got okay, we got, we got a few job announcements, I guess. We want to do the short films where it's, a, it's a, from the, a movies from the perspective of the other side as if it was propaganda. Like Star Wars is, you know, a bunch of religious fanatics from a desert planet, take a cargo ship and go blow up a military base. Darth Vader is a disabled war veteran and ranking official in the military. Untold millions, civilian, uh, untold millions of civilians are killed in the Death Star explosion. All that stuff. And make short films like that. We are also um, looking for showrunner and producer and comedian. And so uh, it's, just, it's, it's just we need we need like production manager level. Uh, uh, we need like project management high level uh, uh, stuff. So... I think the first thing we're looking for is probably resumes from people with uh, um, experience working in show production. And I mean like legit full on shows. And uh, then from there, we have to sort of whittle down to figure out who can actually work on the projects we're trying to do to get us like short films and skits and, and other stuff up. So we got to figure that one out. I don't, I don't know. We, we, do we have an email for that? Do we have like jobs at timcast.com or something? I think so. Should probably figure that out. Possibly we do. Maybe you guys can try it out and let us know. Right. And then probably what we're going to do is then we're going to ask for like uh, um, samples and demos. And then the ones we like, we'll ask to come and contract and produce some short films and some some skits and some bits. And then if it works out, then full time hiring or something. That's the plan. Be cool. So we're looking for people who can manage teams, run a show, have creative vision, get, are, are funny. And uh, yeah, that's what we're looking for. We got a great uh, uh, film team, though. Like uh, our our, uh, uh, our our crew, Wesley and Aaron, they're really really good, and uh, and Kent as well. So the music video that we're putting out in uh, eleven days is so far looking absolutely hilarious and incredible. I'm really excited for this. I hope everyone's ready. I I, I have to say this. I have to say this. Uh, this song that we're putting out, it's probably the greatest song ever written. Yes, I, and, and 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 I I I I'm, I just have to say that. And I believe once the song comes out, everyone will understand what I mean. But I believe uh, the song that we are putting out, it's a cover. It's a cover. It's a, it's, it's a modern cover. And, <laughs> and, and, and it is the greatest song ever written. And uh, 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 that's not in dispute. They're going to figure it out. <laughs> They're going to figure it out, man. I'm warning you. Good, good. Let them figure it out. Let them figure it out. It'll be funny. And they still have to watch the video because they can't figure that out. 
true. But uh, it, it is the it is the greatest song. The greatest. All right, where are we at? Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, Did you notice he didn't say Marines? We recruit. Ah, interesting. Yeah, Marines consistently make their recruitment goals. And I've and so does SpaceX. SpaceX regularly make they're not SpaceX, the Space Force. Um, but I think that's again because there is more to it than just your rank and file and you're putting on a uniform. The Marines have a culture and especially, you know, Space Force is people who are interested in space. There's something else there. We should ask questions about the motivation and culture. We shouldn't just make it be like, Oh, well, we don't have a body, so we'll just take a body that's here illegally and put them in. I bet we'll nobody nobody's have figuring to, it out. I bet we'll also have to lower the vetting standards, right? Because we have no idea who these people are. They're not being vetted when they come across the mm -hmm. border. I'm sure a lot of these people are from terror hotspots that would raise a red flag going through a normal military vetting process. I'm sure they're just going to have to lower the standards if they want to actually let these people in. Everybody keeps saying tribute by Ten Tenacious D. That is mm. incorrect. Yeah, not we are not tribute to the greatest song out. in the world. We're, we are not putting. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And um, I think the reality is tribute was probably about the song that we're, we're putting out. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, you talked oh, about it on boy. Friday. So if you guys are watching on Friday, you know. So. All right. We have uh, Lars Joey says, watch Bill Maher's comedy before his talk shows. His commentary was absolutely on point. Makes his fall into ignorance even more stunning. Sad reality. But there you go. That's just the way it is, man. Dude, how does he not know who Klaus Schwab is? That is so crazy. Because he doesn't read. Yeah. Still. Look, look, look. We're like What the heck? Ian. If you had $30 million in cash, would you really care anymore? <laughs> yes. Bill Maher is what, 60 something <laughs> years old? How old is the guy? Yeah, something like that probably. He's probably just like, I'm tired, man. And then HBO is like, Bill, look, we're gonna pay you another, uh, you know, 10 million this year. And he's like, nah, whatever. And hey. then he probably barely pays attention. He's just a goofball. Just a goofball he's just comedian. He's just checked out. He's checked out. And I don't blame him. I mean, he's probably he's smoking cigars and drinking whiskey. He's single. He's got no kids. Yeah, what most do? comedians what a don't weird even existence. Yeah, what does he do? He's just like super wealthy and not in curious about anything and has no children. Like, what is, <laughs> what is he doing? Curious because he he interviews really high powered pol politicians. Even he interviewed that, RFK that mean, and Vivek. He's curious though. Like he could have a Booker who's like, you should talk to this guy. And he's like, what do they do? Who's MK Ultra? <laughs> He is curious. I'll give him that. If you I listen don't want to this him, stuff, so I should, again, I'm being kind of hard. He on definitely him. likes to dive in on ideas. All right, everybody. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, and head over to TimCast.com. Click join us. If you want to support the work we do, and we're doing a whole lot, especially once you guys see the song coming out, it's the greatest song ever written, and uh, uh, then you'll you'll see. But we we are uh, all of this is possible thanks to viewers like you. So when you become a member, this is what you're supporting. And you'll also get access to the Uncensored Members Only show coming up in a couple of minutes. So uh, once again, smash that like button and you can follow the show at TimCast IRL. You can follow me personally at TimCast. We got a bunch of, I put up a skate clip today. So um, as we're gearing up to launch the, uh, uh, the Boonies, which is our new skate show, we are investing, I think, probably close to, probably more than a, yeah, I think it's fair to say over a million dollars in our uh, semi-private East Coast skate facility We've got several pro skateboarders coming out. We're going to be inviting other professional athletes in the action sports uh, area. What, probably one of the biggest investments into action sports content uh, right now. So follow me on Instagram at TimCast if you want to see some of those clips. And uh, Kingsley, do you want to shout anything out? Yeah, please follow me. I'm Kingsley Wilson on all of the platforms. And then also follow my organization, Center for Renewing America. We put out a lot of great work on what's going on on Capitol Hill. It's been so fun having you here. Uh, I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I'm a writer for SCNR.com, also known as Scanner News. I'm really grateful for our team and everyone who works on that. Uh, tons of journalism. You guys should check it out. Uh, you can follow at TimCast News on Twitter and Instagram still to see Scanner's work. If you want to follow me personally, I'm at I'm on Instagram at HannahClaire.B and I'm on Twitter at HC Brimlow. Uh, I think you should probably follow Trash House Records if you want some updates on the music. Uh, and uh, yeah, guys, thank you guys so much. Yeah, subscribe to me on YouTube at Ian Crossland, everywhere else at Ian Crossland. I'll be doing some cool interviews this week and more weeks going forward. So keep in touch. I'll see you there tomorrow. Uh, pleasure to have you again, Kingsley. Appreciate your time. Um, and I just... <clears throat> Had a good time. Had a good show. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys next time. We're going to pull up that exploding house for the members only show. Yeah, so uh, come crazy. check it out. Yeah, it looks like the police were trying to break in or something, but uh, we'll pull that one up. <laughs> we'll see you all over at TimCast.com in a couple of minutes. Thanks for hanging out.